Greetings. Magebit here. We're going to have a special episode of RuneScape Weekly here for you right now. We're doing a Game Jam wrap-up. And we got some other miscellaneous content here for you as well. Hope you're ready. I'm feeling good today. Let me go ahead and unmute myself in Discord here. You can join by DXDLB. How you going? And Parnassius. What's up, buddy? G'day, g'day, g'day. We have a quick little introduction here before we start the show. Um, how's everybody doing? Yes, um, not too bad. Just in, he's just enjoying the game at the moment. Bought my, as I said, uh, pre-show. If anyone heard, I bought myself a treadmill. So uh, been trying to just get a bit of that done and get some movement back into my back. Mm, nice. I'm glad to hear that you have a fancy new toy. I'm a little jealous, but <laughs> you know, I'm glad to hear that. It's always nice. Uh, especially uh, with you're, you're heading into your winter, so you know you're not gonna have yes, the ability to that's be why outside. We're currently in autumn, but where's the autumn weather? Holy heck! Is it still yeah, hot? Yeah, we're basically in summer, to winter. <laughs> yeah. Is it, is it yeah. cold or hot? It's winter. Ah, today was cold. Gotcha. Yeah, we're yeah. still we're yeah. still struggling. We don't really have spring anymore, so we're still struggling with cold mm. weather here. And hopefully, in the next uh, couple of weeks, we'll be seeing our regular spring weather. But holy crap! It snowed the other day. Well, it's, with three days, three or four days ago here, we had like 33 degrees. And now today it's like 17. It's, it's like, Jesus, come on. Oh, crazy. Thank you very much, <laughs> Killer Bunny, for the 100 bits. It's the only time when I bits. clicked on join for my friends lift and it actually shows you live. Well, that's cool. It actually worked. <laughs> Yeah, that really Funny, works. you can. You, if you want to give me a hundred bitcoins, I'll be happily to accept those. <laughs> <laughs> Let's switch over to our our podcast view here. All righty. I'm just looking at, um, it, it's just really sad. If you look at RuneScape, uh, their community online in the forums, they have uh, 30, uh, sorry, 15 active users online at the moment. And then, I, and then I look at Reddit and it's got uh, 1,751 <laughs> yeah. active right now. It's like, God, oh, that's so sad. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it is. I mean, clearly everyone has basically moved over to Reddit. Yeah. Because all those people would be on the forums if they, uh... Well, that's that, that Mod Jack thing that we'll be... Are we going to be talking about that today, or we're saving that for Friday? What? What about Mod Jack? If it's on the, the show post... notes... Oh, the oh we, sorry. Yep, yeah, okay, yes, okay, so... Yeah, check out the notes, um, man, how's your form? <laughs> I thought we were, no, I thought we were just doing the TLDWs today, so... But yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, he posts that on, on the Reddit... I don't think he's put it in uh, in the official form. Yeah, yet. yeah. I was like, <laughs> seriously? Come on. I didn't even think about that. Like, and that just show, goes <laughs> to show you how much I don't even like use the official forms anymore. Yeah. It didn't even cross my mind that that's the case. But you were completely because I didn't see it because I got told about it, and it's like, oh, okay. And I've had a look at it. I said, that's not. Why isn't that on the official forum? Because I, I generally only use the official forums. Yeah. And, you know, it's it's not there. It's very sad. I go to the official forums mainly to try and find, sh like, trash, that which is sad. <laughs> mm. uh, I look for people complaining about stuff. Uh, all right. <laughs> uh, I got the music queued up for the show. I think we're ready to go. Um, okay, let's go. Let me go ahead and stop this music here. And, of course, if you want, there is a pre-show available to today's show, which will be, it's not up yet, obviously, because we just go right into the show from the pre-show, but after the show ends, it will go right up, and uh, you'll be able to get that at patreon.com slash runescape. Today's pre-show was, uh, looks like it was 27 minutes, 28 minutes long, <coughs> almost 28 minutes long, uh, and we had a... We have a whole bunch of new perks, which I will talk about in the uh, intro to today's show uh, for Patreon that some people may be interested in and some people have already taken advantage of. But anyway, let's get into the show here. Uh, eh, you know what? If you want to do a show, you have to have your show notes in front of you, Magebit. That's generally how shows work. <laughs> uh, all right. Here we go. Show notes. Show notes. Okay. I am Magebit. I can do this. Oh, we have some PSAs. All right. Cool. Three, 
two, one. You're listening to RuneScape Weekly for 4-17-2018. I'm your host, Magebit, with 17 years of RuneScape experience. Joining me today is Pernasius and DXDLB. And on today's show, Game Jam 2018, Spring Cleaner, and Magebit's first Reddit Gold Gift. Thank you for tuning into this edition of RuneScape Weekly, and enjoy the show. Welcome back for a special edition of RuneScape Weekly. We're doing Game Jam. We uh, got to see all the projects that the Jmods were working on this weekend at Game Jam, and they have been placed into two wonderful little TLDWs for us to go through and talk about. So we're going to be doing that. We're also going to talk about Spring Cleaner. They uh, Obviously, they've taken the time to finally do the design document for it. We were afraid that maybe it wasn't going to be ready in time for um, the Mining and Smithing rework on release, but... Here it is, at least the version one of it, and I'm pretty excited about version one of it, so we're going to get into that. And the very first time I've ever given Reddit gold, it happened last night, and I gave it to Mod Jack for his wonderful response to the mining and smithing uh, review post that someone had posted here about how no one even wants this damn thing. Well, we'll see about that. Anyway, <laughs> uh, before... Before we get into the show here today, uh, we have some PSAs and whatnot. One big PSA from me before I let DX handle the regular PSAs. Uh, we did add some new perks to Patreon. Uh, re kind of tooled some of the basics as well. So, of course, anyone who pledges anything at all on Patreon is going to get access to the Patreon pre-shows that we've been doing. Uh, basically, anytime there's a show, we get together and do a little bit of Patreon pre-showing beforehand. And then I post that up there. And it's generally between 30 minutes and an hour long, uh, depending on how how long the prep time is for the show. Uh, so if you are interested, you can pledge any amount and get access to that. Then we also have some other uh, new perks that are uh, completely fresh. Uh, I've been I've been doing my my domain uh, sniping again, looking for cool runes cool RuneScape domains, and I've got a few. Got a few here for you. Uh, if you want some vanity URLs to really stroke your ego and show off to your friends, uh, if you uh, pledge three dollars or more a month, you can get a custom RuneScape video URL. Maybe you're a RuneScape YouTuber or Twitch, or maybe you just like to make media or whatever. You can get a custom your name RuneScape video URL for pledging three dollars or more a month. You can get a custom RuneScape expert URL. So like I have a. Uh, you can go to like magebit.runescape.expert and you can get my adventurer's log. Of course, being me, you just go to runescape.expert and it goes directly to my adventurer's log. But you could have your name.runescape.expert. That's at $5 a month or more pledging. Uh, we have runescape.club available as well now. Uh, if, you have a, if you're a clan leader or something like that or you just have a friend's chat or something along those lines and you want to make it nice and easy to access your clan or whatnot. For instance, if you go to runescape.club, it's going to redirect you to the Kill, Skill, and Chill uh, Rune Clan page. So now it's easier than ever to find Ru uh, uh, the RuneScape Weekly Clan. And it could be easier than ever to find your clan as well with a nice custom vanity URL. That's a $10 more a month pledge at patreon.com slash runescape. So if you're interested in vanity URLs, we've got you covered here, and you can support the show as well. So uh, a few people have already taken advantage of our vanity URLs, so feel free to do so if you are pledging. And thank you so much for allowing us to do what we do here at RuneScape Weekly. That's just one of many new play, uh, features that we're going to have on Patreon. I've been trying to find things that are more tangible and don't require uh, as much upkeep for us to do that are still beneficial for people and let you know that we appreciate the things uh, that you're doing here by allowing us to do the show and whatnot. So hopefully uh, that pays off. Anyway, uh, we have some PSAs that are uh, non-RuneScape Weekly related. DX, would you like to get into them for us? <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay, I will. Uh, the minigame spotlight is currently located on. Oh, sorry, it's currently on Conquest. Sorry about that. Uh, the circus is currently located at Varric near Gertrude's house. The free Solomon General Store item for April is the Dragonfly Wings, and this is something you all should pay attention to. There is upcoming maintenance in RuneScape. Uh, see the RuneScape webpage for details. The maintenance when it goes, uh, when the maintenance starts, it will stay for about eight hours so uh keep an eye on what worlds are affected you can see that uh, there in the runescape website and that uh just to let everyone know that is on the 18th at 6 30 game time which is tomorrow yep thank you very much for that and 
yeah, we're going to do a show now, I suppose. It's just so weird to do a non-Friday like Friday show, so I'm a, little, I'm a little jarred by that. I'm excited, though. It's been a while since we've been able to coordinate enough to have a an off-day show and like still planning on doing a regular show at the same time. So that's pretty cool. Uh, anyway, uh, anything anyone wants to talk about before we get into our stuff today? Uh, anyone got, yeah. got anything I going on? Yeah. I would like to say uh, straight off the bat, yeah, those people that have been paying attention to one of my previous live streams, you would have noticed I've actually, I was actually using stream, uh, was it Streamloads OBS. Now the reason for that is my XSplit uh, license actually lapsed. Um, uh-huh. it, it was previously pending with the bank, but the but I think I what I did is I managed to cancel the auto payment before they took it out. So uh, oh, I good. will sort that out. I'll sort that out this week and go back to XSplit probably by the end of the week. Hmm, gotcha. Not, uh, so I, I, I personally le- I'm going to let my license for XSplit expire next month and probably not renew it. I've been really happy with Streamlabs OBS. Took a little while to get used I to it. Yeah. <laughs> I say I downloaded that Streamlabs OBS and I was having a look at it. It seemed okay. I was gonna, I was actually gonna chat to you about that. So it sounds like uh, it might be a good one to go for when I get a chance. Yeah, if you hate paying money to people and you like cool features that help you track, you know, your listeners in real time and whatnot, like what's going on, like everything is built right into the client here. I look over at my right hand monitor, I can see all the recent events that happened, the Killer Bunny pledged 100 bits, Rory Walker pledged five dollars via Patreon two days ago. Uh, you know, uh, Mesodors followed us three days ago. That's all right there. Um, that's really cool. And over on the right hand panel, I have live chat right here. Kira Bunny was uh, uh, giving us a little anecdote here that I haven't had a chance to get to about the forums versus Reddit. Reddit, you could talk to the community and get some JMOD interaction, and the forums are just basically angry people yelling at you. <laughs> it's, like, it's very true. <laughs> uh, so, you know, um, I like it because it's got all that stuff right built in there, and I can see my, my audio levels and my scenes are all right there. A little, a tiny little preview of what what's being pumped out to the internets all right on one screen. It's nice. XSplit gives you, I think, some of that, but doesn't really do it all enc- encompassing in one single program which is you know, really if there cool. was one if there was one issue that i have with the streamlabs obs is the game actually the great game resolution when i set up another scene when i set up an original scene and then go to the game thing it changes my resolution in the game that's on the screen hmm that's interesting so I it did really not... screws me over i did not have that issue i'd have to i have to look into that Mind um, you, it's probably it's probably because I'm a noob at the streamlabs. I had a I've hard time. A times. I had a hard time setting up resolution and everything, so I I wouldn't blame you if it was a setting. It's not the easiest thing in the world to get set up, but n- right. really nothing is in the streaming world. Like once like getting your initial settings down is always annoying. If I remember correctly, it was mildly annoying in XSplit too, getting the bit rate set correctly and choosing the correct encoder and all that stupid crap. It's like you got to start from square one and. And doing that is uncomfortable, and um, it, it led to some pr- lower than choice quality streams for me for a couple of weeks. But uh, I, I've mostly got things set now, mostly. Still working on importing some graphics and whatnot. But anyway, uh, per- yeah, just, just, yeah. No, just one. Sorry, just one more thing. Yeah, I'm go for sorry it. Sorry to interrupt, but just one more thing. If I do drop out tonight, it'd be because the NBN, because it has been a dog's breakfast all week. <laughs> I mean, literally, I. Well, I stayed up on the weekend to watch the game uh, jam, which we're going to be talking about in a second, right? Mm. It it dropped out during both streams, both live streams. The second one, which is the Sunday one, it the NBN dropped out for about five or six hours, which meant I missed the entire night after about 12 minutes. There has to be like a state of emergency for there to be no internet with for five or six hours like around here. I would be yeah. losing my mind with no internet for that long. That is... Yeah. I'm glad to hear there was, you're alive. There was, a, there was an investigation. Apparently, complaints to the... Welcome NBN to Australia. Service, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. There was the complaints uh, to the NBN were up over 200% in the last calendar year. Wow. I can imagine. People that, are not that happy. That report was released today. Wow. So people definitely are not happy with their new Screaming Fast broadband service, it sounds like. Yeah. They're screaming, but, anyway, but it's not fast. Like New Zealand's or something. That'd be so much sweeter. Four. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm still uh, jealous of the R I'm in. I, I, I mean, Which I we were going to well. get under a rod, but. <laughs> yeah. Four. Today's the 17th, right? Yeah. Okay. 
Sorry, I'm just starting to convert the pre-show over here because I'm proactive like that. Um, cool. So, what's going on with you, Pern? Anything new? Not a lot. Uh, people may not have heard. I picked up the Flo, the fetch, uh, Fletching Pet on uh, Sunday, I think it was. Uh, so that's um, oh, just just stretching, uh, fletching down to magic bows. I've done all my elder logs, so I was doing uh, magics, and uh, yeah, popped into the popped into my um, inventory there. So that was good. Um, other than that, still doing a bit of Slayer here and there. I've actually got I've got to get back to the Dagonoth Kings. I've got two hundred and sixteen of those to kill, but uh, and back to Talos. I'm uh, of Still got three more to kill on my uh, on my Reaper task, and had a lot of fun doing that when I was learning it. So, gonna get back and do a bit of that. But other than that, just yeah, just general gameplay. Cool. All right, you were now, now the chasing the Woody pet, the woodcutting pet. Nice. What was that, DX? You were off fishing the, pet. No, I got that. Fishing, go. Sorry, you were after the fishing pet, weren't you, mage? I want the fishing pet because it's been ever elusive for me. I was just complaining yeah. the other night because it's I had like 125 million experience. I can't really, really, really complain until 200 million. I guess I just I've been fishing is my thought, favorite skill, and I'm surprised I don't have the uh, pet yet. Uh, I thought you got, got that already. No. <laughs> I got the fishing pet in the Imperial District in Manifold, so just give you a heads up. It's in the VIP section. I was I surprised it. that I didn't get it while I was there, too, because I did fishing for, like, you know, all the rep in um, Menifos, and I did not get the pet, and I haven't gotten mm. the pet, and I'm like, I only have, like, 70 million That's where experience I to go. Got the pet. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. I, don't, I, got, I got the hunter pet on an uncharted island. I got the hunter pet doing divination. Yeah, no, I was... <laughs> I was chasing, yeah, I was chasing the uh, the fishing pet at Menafos as well, and one of those implings popped out, and yeah, it's uh, oh look, it's a ninja one. I'll catch that one. And I was, and, hang on, what's that? I got the hunter pet. So yeah, nice. that was at like fifty k XP uh, is all I'd done in hunting basically <laughs> since it was released. So you lucky bastard, you should have bought a lottery ticket. <laughs> So for today, we are mainly going to be talking about Game Jam with a little side of mining and smithing and uh, some, you know, some irreverence, but um, mainly Game Jam here. So our first document that we're going to pop open here is uh, written up by Sudi, and we have pretty much a rundown. Just while you do that, yeah. sorry, I one. am just going to reset my internet because i'm getting only single bar it's all red and you guys are breaking up so okay. i'll be back in in two or three minutes okay we'll continue on here uh so first up here uh anything that is made during game jam is to be considered a work in progress and subject to change or not even making it into the game at all so things here are, are mainly just creative passion projects that are being done and hopefully will make it into the game but you know there's there's no guarantee Pretty much. You re you remember last year's game jam where Mod Dag decided to do that, uh, but penguins in space thing, and that spaceship <laughs> was called the Project uh, the, uh, the Glory X Hatch or whatever it was called. That was pretty great. I, I um, and, and un unfortunately, that didn't make it into the game. So <laughs> there's tons of stuff that may not make it into the game from Game Jam, but we can hope because everything this year was pretty cool. Um, we can yes. start up here with unstable skilling dungeons. Now, you had me at skilling dungeons, but let's continue on here. This is being worked on by mods Iago and Edge. Uh, and they work the same as Uncharted Isle maps. There's a rare chance to receive one while skilling. Uh, they, they will be level 40 plus. They'll be pretty rare because they're going to be pretty rewarding. Resources will scale to the player's level, and they're looking to do around eight different dungeons that are randomly generated. You'll be able to locate the resource dungeon using the Clue Scroll Compass interface. So you'll be, you know, trotting around the world following an arrow trying to find uh, where this dungeon is located. Once you enter it, skilling dungeons have a timer before you're ejected, akin to the Premier Club Vault. Lots of resources will spawn. At the moment, it's only for gathering skills, and it will probably stay that way. There will be stronger versions of existing nodes with two options. One will be for GP, so you'll gather a lot more resources than normal. Uh, and one will be for XP. You'll get way more XP than normal, uh, similar to how the, dwar the Dwarven Ran Hammer works. There will also be special spots, including treasure chests, and they're looking to in introduce more to special spots beyond just treasure chests. So we don't actually know what's going to be in those treasure chests. We just know that there will be treasure chests uh so this yeah, will be that was the one thing that that was the one thing i did tease is 
the the treasure chests, but they they weren't sure what they're going to put into them yet. Mm, yeah, that's that's going to be interesting to see what they do with that. So these little dungeons are just distractions and diversions for skillers, basically, to give them something to do while they're already doing things. I suppose just if you want to mix it up, maybe get some bonus resources. You know, ass assumedly here you you can. You can use this as a boon to your XP or a boon to your money. Uh, again, we don't know exactly how much money or how much XP, uh, but we, what we were able to kind of garner is maybe how long these would last. They, they said that uh, they weren't exactly sure on the numbers yet they had. They were subject to balancing, but it could have been anywhere from as low as a minute to a few minutes to five minutes. You know, there, It could be a, s a significant amount of time we have here. We know there's going to be bank deposit boxes inside, so you won't have to leave the dungeon to deposit your resources it's going to be like a shop till you drop mode you're just grabbing everything you can and dropping it into bank deposit boxes as quickly as you can before time runs out and here's, i like that here's a question here's mm -hmm. a question for you mage what about if we take the uh what do you call it the magic uh note paper in there or or the importance of passages you know i would assume that that would work uh yeah. it would be <laughs> Probably would be at a cost to you, of course. You'd want to obviously weigh the cost of the items that you're uh, earning versus the cost of the note paper or the porters. But um, yeah, you just as long as you're still in the uh, in the in the in the black there, you could maybe actually benefit and gather more resources there because you'll never have to stop to go to a bank yeah, deposit box. Yeah, you won't have box. to stop the bank. That's, yeah. the, that's my point, yeah. So, yeah, it's very well possible that those could play a role here um, as far as efficiency goes. Uh, we, may, we, we also may find that it's easy to, or too easy to empty the dungeon without them. So uh, hopefully they make it uh, somewhat... Um, difficult to obtain the resources or at least they make it so they're either you have to have some sort of choice because i think that is going to probably what makes these things interesting is that you can't gather everything and you have to make a choice as to what you're actively gathering knowing that you're not going to be able to take everything with you because I, I think that's going to add a lot of fun to how it plays out so hopefully that they they balance that correctly <coughs> from, what I, from what I saw the resources do drain after x amount of time <coughs> what we were told yeah, uh, yeah, and hopefully but, that... Yes, go ahead, Prim. No, no, that's all right. I was just going to say. And hopefully what Mage is sort of saying there, some, they said some will only have like five items in it, which will be really unlucky. Yeah, it would suck. But some will have yes. a whole lot. But, you know, you want if you get a whole lot one, you, you want to say, okay, what am I going to go for? I'm going to really deplete that. And, you know, that's where that XP bang, I'm going to get a whole lot of XP there. Or I'm going to go for this one over here because I'm getting like double double loot from it, uh, you know, double logs or something like that. So that's what's going to be good where you've got to make that decision. You've got the five minutes or whatever it was that you've got to do. Um, I, I was actually, I, I quite like the sound of it. Yeah, I did too. This was high up there for me on the list of things that were being worked on at Game Jam, definitely. Uh... They, were, hmm. they were also looking to add like po po possibility of adding agility shortcuts to these uh, dungeons yes. as well. Yeah, I think, and I was saying while this was going on, they, why not, and I think you agreed with me, Pern, is why not take this concept and apply it to mine shafts, you know, add yes. some agility shortcuts, <laughs> add some, you know, death if you don't make it out in time. Uh, hmm. and there you go. You've you've basically got the you know the schema at least for um, mine shafts already done for you right there. So hmm. yeah, that's a cool idea. And that may be something that I do look at. The you know, the good thing about this type of content is it can be used for other things as well, um, which is what I like to see. You know, resources that can be that that they create that they can use for other things other than okay unstable unstable skilling dungeons, but we might be able to do mine shafts. We might be able to do, you know, down the track, there might be, you know, go down and get a special herb potion or something like that as well. They're all different things that mm. they'll be able to sort of do with this type of resource down the track. Speaking of special herb potion, by the way, just before I forget, completely unrelated, and we'll talk more about this on Friday, but uh, the RuneScape Jagex is looking for people to join their... Um, farming discord right now they, they're looking for non-combat mm. consumable rewards to give to farming so if you have any non-combat consumable ideas that uh would be good for farming rewards uh please consider joining the farming discord um and, and helping them think of good yeah. reward spaces 
Uh, and this is again, this is what I was saying. This is perfect where you could grow a certain spice on on this farm. Then you have to create a pizza base. You need this certain spice. Uh, you'll need a sail fish and a blue jellyfish. You need to cut them up. It you know, like an overload where you can only make four in your inventory at a time. So it's you know it's not going to be a, a a mass production thing. And it you know it'll take you sort of two or three minutes per inventory to make, but make the best food, one that gives you you know, high healing, no loss of adrenaline or a Again, lower prayer rate drain and things I would like, like that. This to stress, is perfect what they need to do. I would like to stress that they are looking for non-combat idea consumables for, <laughs> for farming. But thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, a killer bunny saying I would imagine it's going to be like sinkholes where you are limited to what you can take into the uh, into the unstable dungeons. That Yeah, I think that would be probably for the point. best. Is making the sure the entries, you... by the way, they did look like sink sinkholes. Yeah, they uh, did. The I wonder if, points, yeah. I'm wondering if those were just temporary graphics or if they are just going to, you know, straight up steal those graphics. I mean, they, they, I think, I think that was steal. a temporary. <laughs> I think that was a temporary thing. Yeah, I, I don't care if they do reuse them. It's just, you know, obviously game jam. They they're just bottling. You know, they're using you know, already assets they already have, but. Uh, anyway, continuing on here, uh, Mod Show. Oh, we had that. Dis- sorry, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say we had that discussion. You and I. I was asking why the hell are they doing it in Java? Mm, so yeah. apologizing. Sorry, you know, it's it's in Java, not in XT. The quality of the thing. And I, you had the I, good point about um, just the ease of programming. I almost downloaded the Java client last night. Almost. <laughs> I sat at the legacy screen. I downloaded the the installer. I, I ran the installer, got to the screen where you have to, you click next to install it. And I went, ugh, and I hit cancel. And I was like, I'll just wait until I fix the problems with NXT. <laughs> I couldn't bring myself to play the Java client. What problems uh, are you having with the next The game is crashing every five minutes. It's fixed now. Um, oh, oh okay. Yesterday, the, the game update broke the game just for just completely. Uh, for oh, me, okay. at least. Not everyone, but a lot of people. And a lot of people are actually still having problems, but I'm one of the lucky few who is not having problems any longer. So... Cool. I bet he's just yeah. put the mocker on himself now. Watch. I'm just yeah, right. <laughs> Pretty. Uh, it's, I, I was saying that yesterday. Like I want to jinx myself, but I haven't crashed in <laughs> two hours. Um, but you know, it's still possible that it will crash. And, but anyway, I haven't crashed in a while. I hope to not crash. Um, let's continue on and talk about what Mod Shogun's got in development. Probably the least useful thing, in my opinion, at Game Jam. Uh, the Ripper Demon Pet. <laughs> Called the Nipper Demon, which, you know, okay, <laughs> cute name. Uh, it's going to be Edmu level of pet rarity. And for anyone who fights Edmu, you know, you probably don't right. have the pet. <laughs> yeah. I've killed like 8,000 Edmu and I do not have the pet. Uh, regular yeah, demons can fun. also drop it, but elites have a much higher chance of doing so. It will have an attack animation, so which means it will be overridable. Uh, it doesn't show <laughs> Ripper kill count, but that could be added. And I mean, come on. If it's going to have rarity, like uh, Eddie, like it should show the kill count. So just do that. Mm-hmm. Easy, easy. That peasy. little pet looked pretty cool. I it was. It's cute. Yeah. I like it. I just. They I will about never. This a while ago. <laughs> I'm never gonna have it. Never. Well, when they do release it, I will actually be taking Ripper Demons off my block list. I will never take <laughs> Ripper Demons off my block list. <laughs> Not until. Can you actually put that in your player own Slayer dungeon? Yep. And okay. that's the best way. Yeah. You put one in your Slayer that dungeon. That means you have to kill enough with... to get a soul. Yeah. <laughs> that's, well, that's, that's too much to ask. Me, it took me 17 kills, I think it was, to get the soul from it. Uh, so I was really lucky there originally. But yeah. the beauty is you put it down there with a couple of uh, hill giants or you know the, the dogs for their big bones to, to keep your prayer up and uh, away you go. You just uh, rip it apart and no yeah, killing one at a time. Once you've got your adrenaline up, you should never have to face that special attack where it jumps on the roof. It's just that stupid spinning death. Well, that's that that's when I'm ready to fight Ripper Demons is when my auto attack weapons are able to kill them before they're able to trigger yeah. uh, special attack. <laughs> so basically when like tier 98 weapons are out and I'm wielding them <laughs> is when I'll Someone fight Ripper Demons. get him a noxious scythe or something. I need like, you're going to have to glue a few of those together. Like take three noxious scythes, <laughs> get some rubber bands. Band that shit together, and maybe then I'll fight some Ripper Demons. Uh, let's see. Is, any, is anyone else wearing a Luck of the Dwarf at the moment? Like, at this very second? No. I was. I was, but yeah, I'm not online at the for moment. For some reason, uh, last few times, when it goes into when I wear it, it turns pink. Yeah, it's just graphical glitch. 
Like the, yeah. I told you, the game is literally falling apart as we speak. Mm. <laughs> like and no one can like play the game well, without been, there being something wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's been like two or three weeks. It's been like yeah, that, you know? it's yeah, it's been getting weird. progressively worse over the, every game update <laughs> has made the game progressively more unstable for the past three <laughs> weeks. I wish I was joking. <laughs> mm. Uh, Imagine what happens when the mobile is going to come out uh, for bloody RuneScape. I don't know. You try and play I, it with the special with little crushes at the moment. Well, they're pushing a lot of optimizations, maybe for mobile, to the client, and it's breaking a lot of shit for people. Which you know, it's it's to be expected. We're it's growing yeah. pains. You know, that's why I just I didn't I didn't throw the same fit I threw last time when my client was crashing every five minutes. Was just because like I know they're trying to get mobile out the door. And last time NXT was brand new, so it's like whatever. I'm just I'm over it. I'm not gonna, I just didn't get to play RuneScape yesterday. That's all. Um, achievements. Nomad Soul Capes uh, want to be turned into achievements. Achievements will be updated upon attempting to enter Nomad's Lair in the Underworlds. So if you've already completed the challenges, no need to complete them again. You just have to go there to you know update your achievement diary. Uh, stand I think this is for the timed kills, isn't it? Yes. Uh, stand and deliver. Uh, deliver a pizza to a hungry highwayman. That's for 10 rune score. The type of pizza is Mod Shogun's favorite, but it doesn't currently exist in game, so he made a new pizza, which includes a plain pizza plus nuts plus sliced banana plus cooked chicken plus curry leaf equals banana pizza. 89 experience. What is wrong with that sicko? I don't know if I'd eat that. I would try it, but like, I don't know if I'd like it. He'll... I don't know. I don't know about Sam combining <laughs> nuts, banana, and cooked chicken. <laughs> but I, I don't like bananas that much, but um, I would try it. You know, just be, just to say I've tried it. But again, not a huge fan of bananas. Uh, <sighs> player own port title also in the works for Portmaster. A player own port trio voyage achievement, and we'll add more fun, silly achievements if suggestions are given. So that's what Mod Shogun's working on. Again probably the least important uh, work being done in game jam no offense i i enjoy achievements though chasing oh yeah i, I little, love achievements little, yeah so the nomad souls one is probably one i won't get but um mm. stand and deliver those type of just That's, little fun yes. quirky things i love that's why you know something like you have to go and you know collect a, a log of every type in your inventory and you know things like including you know a, a crystal uh, geode yeah just just little things like that um just to give you a l little fun distraction now and then yeah that's fair i'm 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 totally down with the achievement system and them adding new fun achievements to it that's um, especially skill ones <laughs> yeah definitely especially skill ones i just don't want to fight a billion ripper demons that's all uh new player <laughs> experience uh months to bring it at home uh you know caring about probably the least cared part of the game being the new player experience mm -hmm. so hats off to mod stew for doing the work that so few want to do likely that we'll be moving over from ashdale to tutorial island again i will i'll eat my hat i'll eat those words i i once said ashdale was a superior tutorial data has shown that i was wrong and i'm willing to eat those words and remind you that i'm an idiot because uh, i could just let that fade into the background uh <laughs> move you to lumbridge instead of to ta tavarily oh, oh, uh. Berthorp following to the tutorial. Too many T's in that sentence for me. More nostalgic <laughs> and iconic. It offers greater variety of content and it nudges you towards Berthorp after Lumbridge. The thing that they say that it's nostalgic and iconic really just kind of tells me who is making new characters. And it ain't new players. <laughs> yeah. Which makes me sad. But when I actually had a... I mean, because when I made my Iron Man, obviously, I had Ashdale, and uh, I loved Ashdale. I thought it was really good. But that's because I had played the game before. When you sort of look back at it and think, as a, as a brand new player, I do think uh, Tutorial Island gave a better sort of linear way of learning. This is this, this is this, this is mm. how we do this. I, I do think for a brand new player... Uh, Tutorial Island was probably superior, but Ashtar just looks so much better. And and for someone making a second account, I, I yeah I thought um yeah Ashtar was far superior. But yeah, as a as a new player, and that's what we're hoping to get with mobile. So Gra graphic graphically, Ashtar is better than Tutorial Island. But if you want the nostalgia <laughs> feel, then you definitely go to Tutorial Island. And apart from that, I think Ashtar de deals with the evolution of combat. Tutorial Island doesn't. Fair. That was my one of my main things, and I was. That's actually a good point. Yeah, it was that. Yeah, that's probably why I was so drawn to it. Was it was geared more towards the the combat system, but I I don't know. I haven't really done Tutorial Island in forever either. So what do I know? 
<laughs> what do I know? Uh, going back. I hope to... when I do, I, I hope when I do decide to bring back Tutorial Island, we get a, we all just get a chance to just revisit it just once instead of going to beneath the cursed tides to see an underwater well, version can. of it. Just make a new just account. Just make a new account. I'm Wait. not going to make a new account. Well, then you can't. It's free. <laughs> it's not going to cost you anything. Well, don't try to don't try to reason with insanity, Pronouncius. <laughs> <laughs> Killer Bunny saying the Nomad fight, you get the lowest cape, I think the black one, but you can go in there with the Death Shot Dart and get a kill. Well, at least it was that way on release. I don't know if they changed that or not. That's a, that's a valid question. I imagine question. they would have changed that. Surely they wouldn't have left that in there for this length of time. I, I'm all for using Death Touch Darts, especially now that you can purchase them like regularly at uh, the, the fishing person, you know, at least yeah, once in a while. The, 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 the traveling... Uh, tra the Trader, yeah. yeah. The Troubling Trader or whatever his name is. Nah, oh, 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 bad jokes almost came out of my mouth. All right, moving along. Uh, <laughs> two uh, paths help with retention because they're very linear and keep you locked in doing certain things. Uh, they want to remove it and replace it with an achievement path. List of achievement paths uh, will be things you can do in order to at your own pace. Uh, they've also added a filter in the quest list area, uh, add, and they've also added achievement paths for quests and series and milestones, such as road to unlocking curses and stuff like that. Consolidated quest information and reducing the technical debt of maintaining them, such as the quest log, mostly under the hood stuff, but should hopefully make quests faster to make. Breadcrumb trails are now standardized. If I can just mm -hmm. uh, jump in that area filter quest, I thought was quite good. Again, four new players. Yeah. So if you're in Berthorpe uh, and you want to see what uh, what quests are there, you can sort of see those. Or if you're in Lumbridge, you can see what's there. Uh, rather than saying, oh, well, that sounds like a good quest. Oh, no, I can't get that. It's a you know mm. different area and things like that's that. That's pretty so novel I thought idea. that was quite good what they did there. Yeah, that's a pretty novel idea. I, don't, I can't like think of another game that does that, to be honest with you. Like... It'll show you where the quests are on your map, but they don't generally mm. filter them out based on where you are. That's kind of cool. Uh, let's see. Made player own house and construction free to play for up to level <laughs> five because free to play can train to level five, but only through lamps. Now, did you see how many people didn't obviously listen and were all asking, is construction now free to play? Is construction now free to play? That I must have counted a hundred different people asking if construction was now free to play because of this. And it's like, no, it's to get you to level five, like all your other skills. You know, it was just like crazy. Yeah, it's <laughs> Yeah, decent. but you know people are dumbasses when it comes to typing no, in questions in the RuneScape Why? Twitch chat. DX mm. thinks yo, DX thinks you're all dumb. How do you like that, Twitch chat? There you go. I don't think you're all dumb. I think the majority of you are dumb. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Uh, let's see your free to play books will be in the bookcase and they and removed the construction requirement for the perils of ice mountain so that's what mod stew has been up to uh here's probably my favorite portion of this uh document here is the alchemical onyx uh value rework by mod timbo and narrator uh there's a whole design document for them but we'll just go through the ideas that they have here so these are uh some new Necklace and pocket slot items uh, to add some value to high-end um, Reaper, I guess. Uh, so let's see here. Uh, idea number one is Grace of the Elves, which is a skilling amulet. It gives skillers access to the rare drop table and in turn a chance to get Hazelmere's signet ring. Removes the voice of Saren effect outside of Priftinus because it had its flaws of hourly escape. So that was originally an idea for the amulet, but they took that out. Uh, but they did add... This badass way for skillers to get access to the rare drop table, and that is mainly why I like this so much. But that's the main like <laughs> draw for this amulet. Access to RDT and a chance to get Hazelmere Signet is sick. Oh yeah, man! If you get Hazelmere Signet ring, Matt, so you've just won the game. I would love to be able to do that, especially as a skiller. Two bill? Is that said that worth two bill or something? Right something now? like that around there. Uh, so also, <laughs> this will be able to teleport you to the Max Guild Garden Portal. Uh, from your amulet, and if you have both unlocked, you'll be able to use both portals from your amulet. Uh, that's so you don't have to go to the garden. That mm -hmm. was really good. I like that's that. That's a good option. That's yeah. a good um, choice. That's another another reason why I love this amulet. Uh, the the Saren skilling prayers, such as light form and super heat, will be halved for their drain rates. Uh, that will probably be useful in a lot of situations for skilling as well. <laughs> I think that might be a little bit too OP, you know, with the super heat form, because if you're wearing a whole bunch of prayer gear. Including the say, um, uh, what's that? The uh, one of the Drygall, I think it's the Drygall Mace. Yep. Uh, you could have like prayer of plus what forty or whatever, 
and go down to the living rock cavern yeah and then use the superheat form while wearing this uh, grace of the elves but you could be there for maybe half an hour or something before you before it fully drains because that's you bring get a buttload a lot of potions of, uh, gold there out of it. yeah you're bringing a buttload of summoning potions or whatever potions you need to keep that going prayer potions rather I'm losing it's, it, uh, and you could you, just uh, keep it going for pa- forever. What's that thing called? The port in the passage? Yeah, important um, uh, signs of the portal. Yeah, you could have those. And... Yeah, that's it. I've got about five hundred of them. And so they're... imagine me with all that. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna finish up reading Grace of the Elves, and then Pern, if you want to jump in, I'd be appreciate it. I'm starting to lose my voice. Oh, here. I can. Uh, let's see. You, you'll also have a chance while skilling to have something spawn nearby, like a chest or a person, something along those lines, that when you open it will give you access to that RDT that they were mentioning earlier. And they're still looking for a couple more set effects, either one powerful or two good ones, to make this uh, a complete package here. Uh, continue on, Pern. Yep. Idea number two was Ingenuity of Humans. This is, again, a skilling necklace. Has unlimited teleports to the Invention Guild inside it, not at the door. Uh, If you don't have the Invention unlocked, it will teleport you outside. You can store up to 500 charges of the sign of the porter on the necklace. Oh, man. I hope they bring in both of these now. Yeah. You can use any porters to charge the necklace, uh, and disassembling the speed will increase by 50% while wearing the necklace. They are still looking for a killer feature for this. But even with what it has so far, I thought is pretty good. But yeah, one more killer feature would be awesome. Maybe you can do a raven or something. Needs a killer feature, kills your in, uh, kills your character, and your character will respawn to death oh, after you've kill, done it all. Kill, kills all the trees around you. <laughs> um, don't tell Timbo I, though <laughs> idea number three now it was this a is your baby this is your favorite one this originally <laughs> <laughs> this is one i spoke about when they did the clue release and uh, did the original compactors uh i'd been speaking about this in clan and in uh the bits bites ch- friends chat and all that and i've mentioned a couple times on the podcast as well but uh, this is the easy teleporter the basically the compactor compactor is uh is the way it's described. Now, this is the one idea that really stood out to us following feedback. Materials required to make an easy teleporter is one alchemical onyx, 50 magic parts, and one teleportation compactor. It's a degradable item that can be consolidated, that can consolidate compacted jewelry items. You can store a maximum of six different teleport jewelry on the item. You can use any of the jewelry that you would normally make compacted versions on to the pocket slot item to store it. <laughs> You would then need to have 100 times maximum charge jewelry charges in order to charge the item with a jewelry item. For clarity, here's how many charges of each item you would need to add. Amulet of Glory, you'll need 400 charges. The Combat bl- uh, Bracelet is also 400. Dig Sight Pendant, 500 charges. Enlightened Amulet, Ferocious Strings, both need 500. The Games Necklace and Ring of Dueling will need 800 charges. The Ring of Respawn has 500 charges, Ring of Wealth and Skills Necklace each have 400 charges, the Ring of Slaying 800 charges, and a Traveler's Necklace 500 charges. You can add any combination of jewellery items to the charge uh, item, meaning that you can use up old items that you no longer want anymore. So, for example, if you have 56 charges left on your Amulet of Glory C, uh, which is the compacted Amulet of Glory, uh, they'll count for 56 charges towards the 400 total charges required to add onto the item. Uh, If you have lots of low-charge jewellery, you can use those too. So you could use 400 Amulet of Glory 1s to charge it as well. But obviously, you know, you'd be better off going and charging all those up to 4s so you're not wasting as many. Uh, You can have multiple teleporters at a time. Uh, so if you you can make one of all your rings and then one of all your necklaces, so that is really a good option there. Um, if you have more than one, there'll be an option to swap between four different colors to differentiate between them. So again, they are thinking of that. If people do have two, which ones what, that, yeah, you can make them different colors. Now, again, as I said, they will be degrading. So a freshly created item will come with 500 charges and 5, using any Oh, did I say 500, did I? Sorry, 5,000 yep. charges. And using any teleport on the item once stored will cons- consume a charge. You can recharge the item by using fortunate components. Uh, one fortunate component will equal 1,000 charges. So basically up to up to 5,000, uh, five, 
Fortune Components will give you the full charge. A fresh you created and zero charge item will be tradable. A partially charged or or an item with existing teleports on it will be untradable, and you can clear teleports on the item at any time, but you will not reclaim any of the jewellery spent. So, with all the different teleports we have around the area, I mean, half of my inventory for uh, for Clue Scrolls is just all the jewellery and such yeah. for teleports. So this this is going to make it so much easier, and this is really, really exciting. This is probably the update, not just because it was sort of an idea that I had. This is, to me, the update that they of, of sort of game jam that they come up with. And, and to know that they're already working on it and it's just about ready to be releasing game was even more exciting. Yeah, it, you, this uh, definitely looks mm. like the most complete of the three ideas. Yep. And honestly, so, I hope yeah. we get all of them. But yeah. yes, all three are great. And yeah. you know, if they like needs a killer feature, well, it, it may not need a killer feature. I mean, the features they have are pretty good. And, yeah. You know, it yes, it'd be nice to have a killer feature, but again, you don't want it sort of so OP that it's sort of going to be game breaking as well. You could always add a killer feature through a quest or something later. You know, like. Exactly. There's always room to add more. Don't don't be that's shy. Right. And that's exactly right. And you you took the words right out of my mouth there. Rewards from quests. I can now add this onto the human necklace. I can now add this onto the elves necklace mm. once I've unlocked it through a quest. Yeah. I think they should I think they should utilize their bottle quest system a lot more and start having small 20 minute quests that just do little value added things onto yep. items that just you know just to make your life Rather a little bit easier speak. but yeah exactly yep i, I would love stuff totally, like that totally totally agree anyway <laughs> Uh, anyway, moving on. Bounty Hunter. Do you want me to keep going? Or? Yeah, you can read two, and then I'll read two, and then you can read two. Yep. Yeah, you'll, no. you'll read the last two. God, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Bounty Hunter is, was done by Mods Pie and Harrison. They do have a design doc in there. Do you want to go through the design doc, or we'll just talk about it? We can just talk about it. I, I, yep. I don't care about it that much. Yep. <laughs> so they <laughs> are closing Bounty Hunter. That's all altogether. you really need to know right they, there. <laughs> 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 uh, they're going to have a new wilderness slayer master uh, Vigora uh, and they sort of gave a whole lot of reasons why he is the perfect one there uh, wasn't, boss he fight? Placed, hey, wasn't he going to be pl placed outside the slayer tower or something no he's already in the slayer tower if you go to the Canifer slayer tower yeah. he's actually one of the invisible guys who works walks know, around in right. there if you do the yeah, right. um yeah, the Curse of Zaros mini quest. Uh, you'll actually yes. meet him in there. I didn't know that. Surprisingly yep. enough, you remember I talked about the Curse of uh, Zar Zaros one time, and I was wondering if I had that ring or whatever it was, or the cloak thing for the hidey holes. It turned out yeah. I actually completed it when I was looking all over the place. I couldn't find it, and then I realized it was there, and I'd already completed it. Oh, <laughs> so yeah. Good me. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Um, yep. So the boss fight, which uh, you don't need to be sculled, but it will help. So there's going to be uh, three them... bosses in. The, there's going to be three bosses apparently in this particular one, I believe. Well, we've already got the Chaos Element and the King Black Dragon, so I think they're yeah, but there's going to be three one. more at the. Uh... When is Jagex going to realize that forcing people into being sculled is not the equivalent to PKing <laughs> and PvP combat? Like. <laughs> yeah, putting PVM content in a in a PVP area and forcing non PKers to put themselves at risk just for the enjoyment of PKers is not <laughs> PKing. And, no, and I mean a perfect way to get around that for for people like myself who you know I I do suffer a lot of anxiety. I I do suffer depression, and yeah, you know, they were talking about putting. Um, Revenants' uh, new Slayer tasks in there. Um, if they do that, I hope they don't add so much as I love collecting my souls. I don't want to have to go. Mm. I mean, I almost quit the game over Lava Strike when I'm that. trying to get the soul. And it's something, I mean, I, I like to collect things that it's part of sure. what my game enjoyment Collect -a -thons is. Are and fun. You know, having that, yeah, having that book sort of un incomplete and not being able to complete it gives me a lot of anxiety you know it's just something i do sure. uh and, and doing that type of thing uh really does affect people mentally now i sort of was having an idea now that we are in the sixth age and with this all this type of thing a simple way to do it is have king rolled 
he's made a deal with the Black Knights uh, in the fortress out there, and you know, they're, they're patrolling the wilderness and keeping it safe. Now, for people who still want to take the risk and want to hunt people, you still incorporate your de demonic skull. With that, you'll get 50% more XP, 50% more rewards from everything you get, but you take that risk. But for people like myself who suffer that... I'm willing to suffer uh, to you know to lower my rewards, lower my XP game if I can go in there and do what I need to do and and not have that sort of high anxiety of some dick coming up uh, and killing me and just you know ruining my game. Yeah, there's so much that they could now do with that, especially when they're talking about this new reclaim of the wilderness. They could take that to mm. the next level. I'm and, starting and start doing something like I'm that. I'm starting to feel like the wilderness itself is a product of a bygone age. Like it, it is literally mm. the product of RuneScape Classic. It was the it was created to find a way for people to kill each other in a fun sporting manner without disrupting the normal game world. Because there was the problem where people would just kill each other anywhere, and it was becoming to be an issue. Like you had to basically choose between being a player killing account or being a non player killing account, and you couldn't yep. hop between the two. So, the wilderness was invented to kind of give people this area where they could just be free to be their ravenous selves. Mm. But, like, that was and that's where they had their um, that was 17 years ago. Yeah, that's right. And I mean, you know, the, the game has grown beyond that. Yeah, now. we and have you know, technology it's just, it's far beyond that to now. Move past it. Yeah, yep. It's really time to move past that, and you know, and honestly, most people I go out there, yeah. When I have to go and kill the Chaos Element, I'm wearing Royal Dragon Hide. I take a crystal bow, so all you're getting is three pieces of Royal Dragon Hide, and you know the sharks that are sitting in my uh, inventory. That's all you get as a drop because, yeah, you know, I'm not risking good arm or anything. Or so all you're doing is trolling me to just to be a dick. What's going on? When you kill die. me out there. Yeah. Seriously, um, that's that's what well that's what PKing has devolved into yeah. is trolling. It, yep. it it used to be epic wars between clans or a few roving you know badasses just you know looking for trouble and then they'd get killed by a roving clan, which you know that was me getting killed by the mm. roving clan. But mm -hmm. it was fun, it was exciting, there was some enjoyment to it. But those were yep. simpler times. There's just it just it doesn't fly, friend. It just doesn't work in today's day and age. Like the problem is. And I don't have a good way to explain it, so I'll try this and say, like, The Sims 1 is a great game. But if you released The Sims 1 today, it probably wouldn't hold up to today's standards. Like, that's how I feel about RuneScape Classic. It was a legendary game in its time, and The Wilderness was a legendary place 17 years ago, 16 years ago, even 15 years ago. But it's not mm -hmm. anymore. It, it's mode... It's it's mode of entertainment is outclassed by newer, more interesting modes of entertainment. It's just it is it is a product of evolution and it is deprecated. It needs to be tossed in the trash. Anyway, I'm not yep. saying PK. And I've got to stop. Yeah, go ahead. Hmm. Yeah, and that's it. I mean, and they've got to stop sort of catering to the hundred or so people who still do it uh, and that's what i said you can still incorporate it by having that high risk where people want that you know you want the extra 50 percent xp and such give them the skull fine bang off you go but for other people who don't want that pvp uh, and I Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll let you finish. Sorry. PvP is different to to, to PKing. Yes, it is, and also mm. just P. And one of the reasons why their their PvP system didn't work, in my opinion, at the very least, is that EOC is just not balanced for PvP. It, for it's it. just yeah. our, your health pool is too small, and your damage pool is far too large for DPS to to just it just doesn't work like unless hmm. you can block that damage completely and only a select few abilities can do that uh, and you're not going to be able to keep that hmm. up forever unless you have like acto freaking you know ar armor going on and you're also uh, you know David basically like trying <laughs> trying to have a sustained PVP fight that lasts more than 5 seconds just doesn't really happen oh, yeah. much in RuneScape 3 anymore and that's just due yeah. to the current combat system so it's just there's so many reasons why PvP is just not in a workable state in RuneScape 3. And it, it, it's not a, it's not just because of the fact that nobody does it anymore. Nobody does it anymore because there's no real means to do it anymore. But there's no real means to do it anymore because it just doesn't fit into the current game's paradigm. It's 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 a again, it's a relic of a bygone age. And if we want to have PvP in RuneScape 3, we can. It's just it's gotta be something completely new, which they they 
They kind of tried to do that with Bounty Hunter, but then again, Bounty Hunter wasn't completely new. It was a rehash of a system that failed back in 2000 in, like, what, 9, 8, around there? Like, it was just a rehash of that system. Uh, if you want PvP in RuneScape 3, you're going to have to dedicate a fairly large team to it to figure out how to make it work, and I honestly don't know if it's worth the dev time. That's mm. all I have to say. Exactly. And you're better off doing something like a battle arena type thing where everyone can go in there and clans fighting clans or something like that. But Clan it's Wars like, was yeah. once a great activity. <laughs> um, I don't know what mm. happened to it. I assume, again, it boils down to P, uh, just PvP not XP being right able to, to have... A, yeah, yeah, there's there's no real rewards... <laughs> There's no reward space for PvP. You can't claim people's armor in, in, in Clan Wars. I guess, yes, you can. In the Red Portal, specifically, but not in, in all the... I don't know. I, I think it's just mainly no one... I don't think people really have fun with EOC PvP. And I, I'm sure that that could be looked at and adjusted and changed. But it would probably take, like, eight months of, like, a dev team the size of a, probably a quest team. Like, basically what I'm saying is you could probably release a new master to grandmaster quest in the time it would take to solve this problem. And I think more people would rather have a new master grandmaster quest than they would have a viable solution to PvP. Exactly. Yep. Anyway, um, enough, of, enough of our complaining about this. Yeah, let's continue uh, so on the here. Boss, the boss, let's, let's, the boss let's fights. Let's other um, stuff we can complain about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Each of them have five mechanics in Phase 1 and seven mechanics in Phase 2. The attacks synergize with each other, and hopefully they wanted to show it off on the Sunday, which they I don't believe they did. Uh, 100,000 life points each. Uh, they have inventory for food. Fat Tony will also be cooking pizza and healing them during the fight. Does uh, this mean the fight's going to be... take place at the Rogue's Den, then? Is, is that the, uh, the yeah, Probably yeah. around there, yeah. yeah. The rogues, uh, the rogues den, of... the, isn't the rogues den at level 50 bandit camp the yeah. bandit camp yeah sorry yeah, bandit, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. i know what you mean yeah <laughs> amulet of, I, I, I was just letting it slide for you yeah but uh dx yeah. wanted to point out well know, so, if dx yeah. didn't point it out the comments Since we do it to him all the, the time. youtube comments would have so you know it's, i'm gonna get burned no matter uh, what of, <laughs> sorry yeah no go ahead good you're good <laughs> Amulet of Forsaken Rarity, uh, as, about as long as it takes to get a full set of Barrows Brothers outfits. Uh, the reward shop will give uh, you access to Deathmatch Shop via Wilderness Slayer, and there's also been having discussions on the 4-Tick Auto Attack and we Weapon Diversity with players in the Discord. So, cool. yep. Thanks I mean, 4-Tick Auto Attack doesn't really bother me at all. I can't do it, but, you know, it's... Yeah, if people can do that, I'd rather just... see more creative solutions to difficult high-end combat. But um, yeah. if it's game breaking, I'd rather see Fortic auto attack than see all of the high t high-end PVM players go do it, play a different game. Like, I'll I'll, I'll keep Fortic auto exactly. attack in that situation. But I'd rather see more like more uh, intense, complicated combat maneuvers than mm. calling a bug a feature. But whatever. Yeah. Um, you know what I want to. You know what I want to see in boss combat, right? The ability to press to use like our Xbox controllers or something, you know, like Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat, and do a boss fight that way. <laughs> you 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 want to turn RuneScape into uh, like a hack and slash beat 'em up? Is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> <laughs> Imagine like yeah, RuneScape four. And now's the time. Do like a twelve hit combo or something on him. Imagine that. That'd be that'd be some good times right there. Just watching those there you go, right. smashes come up on the screen. One, two, three, four, five. There you go. Game mm. jam. Game jam next year. Imagine if your XP was based off of chain attacks, and there was just some <laughs> legend out there who's been chain attacking for a week straight, and just has some ridiculous <laughs> modifier. <laughs> you know, there'd be somewhere out there who who would try to do that. Ah, uh, let's continue on here with some construction contracts. Uh, this is being worked on by Mod Ryan. Uh, seeing what I can do without new graphics, uh, they've added uh, the ability to have construction contracts for training at, uh, at three different levels, being easy, medium, and hard, or 20, 40, and 80 construction, respectively. Uh, so here, an example of an easy task uh, is kitchen nightmares here, where you'll have to go around <laughs> and build a bunch of stuff in kitchens for uh, an NPC who happens to be named Gordon Ramsay. Clever, clever. Uh, so again, you'll, it'll open to player own house that is not your own player own house uh, for you to build whatever's required from the contract. Looking to add a checklist interface while inside the player own house for the things that you need to build. Uh, also looking to add the list of materials required for the contract. You'll earn XP and or GP. It won't be as good per hour as current training, but less intensive and a lot cheaper. Potentially having a streak with uh, rerolling a contract to lose the streak. 
uh, some reward points, similar systems to Treasure Trails or Slayer. So uh, there might be a plank, box, or bag to hold planks. Not a lot because its sole purpose is to be used uh, with contracts rather than construction trading. Uh, it will also look at centralizing the player on host portals to one estate agent. So you won't have to go around the world looking for the different estate agents uh, for teleports. Could, uh, could make a choice of where to s exit since portals are used as teleport locations with chip tablets. And of course, those chip tabs you, you use from, uh, you get enabled from the completion of the love story quest. Wow, I can't believe you remember what quest that was. I, I totally didn't remember. <laughs> also, oh, I love, Swan I love song, the idea so of go. plate boxes. <laughs> well I love done. the idea of plate boxes, well don't you? <laughs> yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah. Well, well, be, it's somehow it'll work like a gem bag or you something. Know, you know, the plank box might be pretty good for my farming run because I have to bring a lot of planks hmm. with me to do grapevines. Exactly. So hmm. that would. That's what I was thinking because you've got to have fifteen in there. Yeah. You have to bank twice, basically. Um, I, I'm. I always end up sitting there having to note things on the leprechaun constantly on like your first run until you free up some some space. And yeah. that's frustrating to me. <laughs> so yeah, like a plank box would be yeah. great for farming runs. Awesome. Yep. Uh, and uh, right. And this sounded this sounded really uh, interesting as well. I thought you know it's like a like Slayer contract, so a yeah. PVM con um, yeah. content, and we're yeah. going across the skilling. So uh, I thought this was this, one. Like this was this. really interesting and really yeah. I thought was really thinking outside the box. And Bringing more. Into I'm the sure they'll be able to. I'm sure they'll be able to keep the kitchen nightmares Gordon Ramsay one just for the shits and <laughs> In before season <laughs> desist. Uh, I'm all for it. Any, anything that adds new uh, ways to train to the skilling space, I'm all for. I'm, I'm always complaining about a lack of diversity in training methods. You know, it doesn't have to be best as long as it is comparable and gives you know some sort of, of niche benefit. For instance, this one will be less click intensive, so you won't have to you know be literally destroying your hand trying to uh, train construction which is one of the reasons why it will probably be one of my last 120s, because I'm desperately waiting for a real construction rework. But uh, anyway, yeah. moving on to Mod <laughs> Deg's sequence finale. Mod Deg is moving to an unnamed MMO on Jagex. Uh, so this Game Jam project will be his last. Uh, so if you find the dollhouse, you'll gain access to the doll collection log, and there will be hints, but they're useless. Uh, added a way to skip to the t and he also added a way to skip um, tell us requirements to progress sequences as well if you want to uh, work on the tell us practice I think is what they were referring to there but um, yeah so he's had this creepy doll collection thing going on for quite some time uh, and this is supposed to bring a finale to it from my understanding so uh, wasn't, obviously wasn't the wasn't the dolls thing the bit uh, the the river of blood or whatever it was that was a different what? doll collection it might have been done by mod oh, deck okay. but it was uh that was that was a, a doll, collection. doll collection yeah okay. different doll collection these are creepy dolls um that are like easter eggs i think um if i'm wrong you got to do certain tasks uh throughout the world to unlock them and find them i think that's the one right um, but yeah, it's just just so again, yeah, as uh, Mate said, one of those little Easter egg things. You go uh, uh, around, do these little tasks, wearing certain things and such in areas, and you'll you'll find this a doll. Yep, and so we're obviously this is shrouded in mystery. He's not giving us much detail here because the whole thing is an mm -hmm. Easter egg, and it's for you to find out. So we will eventually, hopefully, have a finale yeah. and some closure as Deg moves on to the unnamed Jagex MMO that we're all paying for by subscribing to RuneScape. RuneScape remastered, <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> but probably not. Uh, you know, continue on. It's probably, go it's probably going to make Transformers Universe again or something. Uh, yeah, that that's uh, where I, I went to bed at uh, that mod Deg. <laughs> section because it was getting late here um but anyway moving on was the abyssal <laughs> slayer mobs and uh we've got some concept art there which was the abyssal savages and the abyssal lords and uh mod nice they... pants. oh yeah <laughs> mod nice pants <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they look the, the concept art art looks really good so yeah. again uh, these, these are cool. those high level slayer mobs oh. they talked about or they uh did on the poll that got uh, voted fairly highly. So some new new Slayer creatures coming in sort of along the lines of... Ripper Why are all these demons so Ramos. wet? Like, all of them are just so wet. I'm just looking at them. They're all... <laughs> it's the drool that's dripping. Yeah, they're yeah, all the just... Drooling, yeah, they're so the drippy. <laughs> oh. 
It's got more drool than the Tears of Gothic says they're, tears. They're drippy and they're um, all that was basically phallic. Me. Go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, as I said, I didn't really watch this, so I can't tell you much about it. Um, but uh, the concept art and just basically from what it was in the uh, poll we had a few months ago. So moving on was uh, Clans, which was Mod Shawnee's uh, little baby. So the Clan board broadcasts. Admin Plus can now manage pl uh, Clan broadcasts from the scribe in the Clan camp. Uh, there will be a bunch of different options, uh, such as... Broadcast all messages, uh, broadcast global slash world only, no messages or hide broadcast to quests. Uh, you can toggle guests seeing the broadcast. So guests uh, guest drops won't have their drops broadcasted and relying only on the engine sign-off, which is great. Yeah. Uh, they give us a broadcast example there. Now, individually mute, uh, mute clan members from clan chat. Uh, so you can now mute just a single uh, a single person if they're carrying on starting an argument. You don't want to sort of kick them out or ban them from the chat for 24 hours or whatever mm. it is. You can just sit there and mute them for a little while. So that'll be good to start a lot. Yeah, if there's some arguments happening, you're trying to get everyone settled down and people are getting a bit heated, you can just mute them in, One in problem? the chat for a little while. Like ninety percent of people are admin plus, so really everyone is now a moderator and can now mute each other. <laughs> well, <laughs> the thing with this is with uh, because the avatar warden uh, is going to be given to anyone of any rank. Yeah. We don't need to make them admin, so we will all sit be down and uh, work that. through with people and redo a lot of people on that because there are a lot of people we've made admin simply just for the admin, I'll, I'll yeah, just avatar. for the avatar warden, That's yeah. Right. So, Why are you guys so are gonna be full? that'll be <laughs> DX for dropping you back down to recruit with Avatar Warden. <laughs> uh, showing the number of people in the clan chat now, so it'll show you the your clan has a total of so many members, and you know there's one of how many people in there. So that was another good one. So you can if you're yeah, someone saying, "Hey, come join my." clan you know we've got 500 people and you you go and guest in there and it shows they've got like eight people so <laughs> yeah telling porkies again yes uh leaving a clan um they've added a second are you sure message with the option swap so you can't hold down one to leave That's so like you that. can't accidentally click out of it uh urns now work in citadels That's that a is good a option, great that. update Yes, because that Especially was one thing I always there? wanted. There's what, what, um, you got the wood cutting plot eight, there, eight which plots I think you there is. Yeah. yeah, but how many can you use? Uh, wood cutting, so mining, smithing, which is not really any good, but yeah, yeah. cooking yeah. one, um, crafting. So there's plenty there. Uh, now all plots excluding smithing and cooking now give an extra 20% more XP. So it's going to really make it valuable to go down there now. Might actually be worth crafting be... there now. Hmm. And for me, it's going to be worth woodcutting there and, and things. Mm. Uh, now, and the full list that he has... Got, got plus, sorry, I'm burn. And also, just remember, mm. you can always use your augmented tools up there in the Citadel as well. It'll give yourself a little bit more XP, but this time for adventure as well. Hell yeah. Don't be wasting that XP. Yep. yep. And that's it. So basically, with the clans, uh, he had just a little summary, which was added a second leave prompt to make sure you absolutely want to leave the clan, change the weekly member requirements to upgrade a citadel, broadcast when the build tick is about to be executed, uh, remove the admin uh, plus check on the warden avatar, provide a feedback message if trying to add someone to ban list and it's already at the cap. There is clan chat muting. The clan invite and clan joining tweaks. And they're going to add a counter to the clan chat, guest chat, and clan ban list. Now just get rid of the uh, avatar and we're all good. We're still waiting on the avatar that's to become like a, a pet or something. Yeah, that's, that's still up in QA. Still waiting, yeah. We're still waiting for that. Yeah, that's a separate there's project. A lot, uh, but there's a lot coming out for clans this year, which is, you know, actually kind of positive. Hmm. So, I mean, just uh, They want to do a cup. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, sorry, you go. I was just in, in considering in how much has been done for clans in the past. I say there's a lot going on for clans this year, but really there isn't. But relatively speaking, there is. That's all. Go ahead. Hmm. Uh, they want to do a couple more clan improvements before the game jam ends. 
and um, they want the possibility of having the uh, attempting to kick ban user message tell admin who has been kicked uh, i would also like to have owners and deputy owners be told who actually kicked the person yeah. too, just in case there's things going on um you know as as we have seen previously um years ago now but yeah we did have that but that sort of brought us to the end of the day one of game jam indeed and on that note, we can pretty much just shuffle right into Game Jam Part 2, unless anyone has anything they need to bring up. But uh, again, I will remind that anything made during Game Jam may or may not make it into the game. So these all sound cool, but you know, it could be months, it could be weeks, it could be days, it could be never that we see some of the ideas that we're currently talking about. Uh, with that being said, we'll continue, exactly. on, we'll continue on to uh, Quest Fest, which was Mod Osborne and Raven. And uh, this is quite long. <laughs> um, you just have an orgasm. I, I actually, I ended up stopping playing and just sitting there and watching them talk about all this. <laughs> Would you like to read this thing? Because I don't know how much I'm going to get, a bit, or want to split this in half. And uh, yeah, uh, do you want to take Osborne or would you like to take Raven? Does it matter to you? No, it doesn't really matter. All right, I'll read Osborne and you read Raven. So let's do this. All right. Yep. So Osborne wrote a dialogue for the Ripper Demon Pet. Uh, Tales of Virago, also a quest that has been written. Uh, quest about Virago's origin. Surveys showed individual boss quests ranked high, which surprised us since boss quests us as concept didn't rank so high. Completely started the quest from scratch because there's things we want to do with Virago, tell us in the future, and make them join up a little. Quite literally an origin quest, following Sliske's endgame, Virago is reminiscing about his origins. Begins with you talking to some high scopuli, more articulate scopuli, not just one that was smoking the doobie. Uh, they're eager to Virago uh, to get Virago back on track because he's just wandering about like a teenager, wondering about the meaning of it all, neglecting his guardian duties. You take them all in the outfit of omens to the bottom of the pool, seen during phase five, and this pool allows you to see more about your character. Through the eyes of the owner of the mall and outfit, you will see Virago and found and find out more about him from the perspective of, of only the person alive who knows about it. The, re uh, the reveal of the owner of the outfit will be a real revelation. Players uh, with story and completely flips some of the things the players thought that they knew. When you first talk to the high scopuli, it's a little bit comedic, but the rest of the quest is really serious with a lot of familiar characters from the origin period. Only character to be revealed currently is Death. Just to have, uh, just have to do some, no, no, I'm sorry. Just have to dot some eyes and cross some T's for it to be complete. Uh, he's also working on a skill cape quest. Was an idea, uh, well, I'm sorry, was an Osborne idea. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, if I just jump with that Virago, that's, as you said, that is just about ready to go. And uh, the way he was talking about it was really good. And going back to those origins, uh, when they were talking about the concept of boss quests, uh, people pretty much hated and said, no, no, no. But they actually just named, they named Virago and they named Araxi um, in the poll. Mm. And they, as I said, they rank quite high. So, again, that's what we say. They can't just sit there and throw out a generic um poll and say oh do you want this well we need specifics what you know a boss quest do i want to do a boss like you know continue on with uh what's his name the one we all hate uh, <laughs> no 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 the the one we've killed like 17 times oh no uh, <laughs> Nomad. Nomad, yeah, that's like, just yeah. drew a blank. Uh, or do we want to do some original ones like this? And of course, if you give us, you know, if you give us interesting characters that you want to do the quest on and tell us, yes, I am more likely to vote for a Virago quest than just, oh, we want to do some boss quests. Yeah, I love my quest, but if I know it's going to be about Virago, yes, I'm going to be more excited and, and do more, you know, vote that higher. Hmm. I. Because I don't do many bosses, I don't care very much. But like, it, I'll still do them, and it will still be cool. Mm. Um, but yeah, it certainly is. A... But this is a good introduction into the boss and what he's all about for yeah. people like no, yourself. I'm you know, totally, uh, for this. and that's what I like because. Yeah, I mean, I know nothing, you know, Beastmaster and Yakimaru, I got, as I said, I got dragged along, I know nothing about them, but if there's a quest about them to tell me about them, then I would love that because it gives me that lore behind it and, and it may pique my interest in in doing a bit more with them, so... Mm. 
it'll be good to see what happens. But anyway, yeah. um, that's enough of that. I'll let you continue. <laughs> Hang on, before we do, I just got this from Mod Shawnee. They're launching a group IMM poll in the next hour, so keep your eyes out for that. All right, yeah. If, if there's a poll that goes up uh, and anyone sees it, let me know. We'll, we'll do it, maybe, uh, if we're still live, which I probably still will be. Anyway, Skill Cape Quest was, was an idea Osborne had when working on Firemaker's Curse with Mod Anna. Firemaker's Curse was supposed to have a 99 firemaking requirement or thereabout, a quest that represents a skill. So you train your skill with this payoff at 99 in the form of the quest and the master unlocks as rewards. So we can bring... Yes. So we can bring back, I'm sorry, so we can bring this idea back and we know from polls that players love perks which are already attached to 99. Also things like Legend Arts' concept shows players love the idea of better skill capes, which, you know, we've been, at least I've been saying how much I want to see a Master Max cape, that, especially like the one that Legend Arts designed. Yep. Uh, give players a quest mm. that feels like a culmination of an entire skill with these new rewards as a step over the 99 you already have. Chosen Hunter as the first would have been obvious to pick the skill with the most 99s, but the reason we picked Hunter is due to story. If you speak to the Hunter skill cape tutor, he tells you about Raharni Wildcats, whose fur is used to make skill capes. Want to make sure we aren't going around killing the endangered wildcats because we've done big cat charity events. <laughs> Raharni <laughs> wildcats have a culture where the chief of the pride remains chief called Dumu Raharn, unless they are proven to be too weak. They are, uh, they are too weak if they get captured by a human. So when humans capture them, it's less kill the big cat than kill the old chief so a new one can take its place. A very symbiotic relationship with hunters. <laughs> interesting way that they've gone about <laughs> justifying the yeah. murdering of Wait, these animals. Yeah, yeah, I like right. the fact that it's called <laughs> Dumi Rahan. Why does that mean something? You know? <laughs> I, I, I don't get it if it means something. Dumi Rahan. Yeah, it's a oh, problem for that. Okay. Uh, let's see. So, not a quest as you know it. Really interested in non-linear storytelling. Dropped into an environment with the objective of killing the wildcat chief to be the master hunter. But then you're set up in this survival scenario. You can explore the island on its day-night cycle. When it's day, it's hot and you're getting hurt. It's just off of Karamja on the equator. And you're looking to build <laughs> shelter. A very living off the land experience. Working by day to build yourself up uh, until the chief pays attention to you. Once it pays attention to you, uh, it comes into your environment, and then it's you versus him. Fight caves for skilling, essentially. A little hesitant to make it intensive because it's a quest. We want to make more players... Uh, I'm sorry, we want to talk more to players whether this is even a quest or more of a skill celebration piece of content. Having it on the quest log is a sore point among players. Uh, uh, really like the idea of this being prestigious, that you committed to surviving the days. If you teleported off the island, you have to start over again. This being the feeling of a skill cape quest, that it demands commitment, knowledge of the game, and your ability to skill. It's currently about three quarters of the way complete. So, I really like some of this. Uh, like, I, I like the idea of um, skill cape quests. I like the idea of them being post-99 content. I also like the idea of them maybe even being post-Quest Cape content. Perhaps these are only required for Master Quest Cape. I don't know how much I like yeah, oh, yeah. adding in quest requirements mm. that require level 99. Um, that's And yeah, that was one of the things... That yeah. Sorry. Yeah. That was one of the things that a lot of people were complaining about that they don't want to have to train up their hunter and you know lose their quest capes. You know, mainly all the questers out there. Yeah. And I can understand that. Definitely, a, definitely a must for the master quest cape. Yeah. Uh, you know, but you know, again, you could have a separate quest log. You can now have a skill cape quest log. That yeah. once you hit ninety nine, that opens up this new quest log, and you can see all these different quests that now I've got my ninety nine. I can go and do. They don't need to be attached to the normal quest log. Um, you, you saw the passion when uh, Osborne was talking mm. about this, and I, I fell in love with this quest. And when I first said, "Eh, the hunter," you know, and then as he was talking, explaining things, that uh, got me all excited, and I'd love to see this in game. It sounds really cool, and the fact. Mm that um it adds survival elements into it definitely um mm. strikes a, a chord with me like that's it's a, that's a type of game experience that i enjoy so you're taking rpg skilling elements and adding survival elements to them and then on top of that adding story elements to them like that that's that's all of like the major enjoyment points that really 
I could think of for um, a story quest. Like, that sounds really fun to me. I just want to make sure to not alienate a large portion of the player base by tacking yep. it to the quest cape specifically. Exactly. Yep. Um, and I think that's that's what they do start that they do need to be careful a little bit with requirements on different capes, and that's what we said. You know, don't put it on the um, on the normal quest cape. Certainly, add it to the master quest cape. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because you need to have pretty much everything right up there for master anyway, uh, with a lot of the things that you have to do. Um, you know, don't even put this on the comp cape. Put it on the trimmed comp cape. Yeah. Uh, you know, leave it off the comp cape. But you know, it is. It is really exciting, and it's great to see them now starting to think sort of post ninety nine content. And uh, you know, hopefully, this is this is just the beginning where they may start thinking, may start to think that we sort of need actual content between ninety nines and one twenties now, rather than just a, another little perk on a cape. If it's a master cape, you know, we want actual content, and this this could be the beginning of that type of content to get. Yeah. This is a definite interesting idea. I often wonder what Osborne does, and here here is an answer, I suppose. Um, so I don't know what needle skips are, but that's a thing he's also working on. Uh, apparently, <laughs> I, I, I read the sentence below it, but like I, st- it gave me no further clarity into what needle skips are. So does anyone know what a needle skip is? Or either way, you can continue and read Raven stuff. <laughs> no. Yeah, I can't. I can't remember what the, what that was. So no, um, I think it had something to do about that sort of cutting it into chapters. Sort of, of what? you skip a little part. Well, the, the quest was going to be cut into chapters, but uh, uh-huh. they're probably not going to go that way now. Okay. All right. Now yeah. Raven is bringing us Desert Treasure Two. Hey. Um, he's not working on the rewards as yet. He basically sent that off. He, he said, I've sent that off to the rewards people. They can look at that. He just wants to write the quest. Um, it uh, has Desert Treasure as a prerequisite, but it's a spiritual, spiritual successor rather than a direct continuation of the story. Players want to go globe trotting without hand held hand holding, so the quest has been written in a way that players have to piece together the information and investigate. Uh, so again, one of those more exploratory type quests, which is really really fun. Uh, copied a lot of this structure from Desert Treasure, the opening section where you learn about stuff and uh, the thing and key items, some hints and clues. Then it branches off into four sections, which can be done in any order. So there's four individual little stories which lead on to the final section with more to learn and more story. Oh, As please, Guardians... let, please, let us, please let us branch off into Desert Treasure 2 to Apostle Island. That'd be amazing. <laughs> Desert Treasure all I, is I not a series about, I care about. Oh, go on. Yeah, well, see, I, I love Desert Treasure basically because it was getting the curses and uh, all that out there. That's why I As hated Garnier's... Desert Treasure. <laughs> <laughs> Asgania Smith returns with his archaeological group. This is, uh, he's the, also... this, is the reason, this is the reason why I wanted Fossil Island now, because he returns with his archaeological group, which now leaves the door open. Yep. Mm. Yeah. That's right. And and Arche- I mean, yeah, Fossil Island is something that makes sense for RuneScape 3 because it was something that's been talked about in sort of for a long time, whereas when they were voting about uh Zaya, uh, you know, we don't want that because that's never been in there. That was something that was thrown in go you know, on the other game right, we don't need school. that but fossil yeah but fossil island even though they have done that in old school still makes sense for rs3 because it is an idea that sort of that has grown from this game rather than the old game um the rite of passage which is the uh the armadillo quest redesigned yes no rite of passage was the rite of passage uh, Armadillo. Yes, Armadillo. Yeah. It's the yeah, the, yeah. The, the planet's name uh, is Abana or something. Yeah, I thought so. I was on yeah. the right track. Oh, oh, sorry, the name of the planet. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> I thought you meant you the Avenic Stargate Avenic. History One, weren't you? No, no, I was thinking you were saying the Avenic Demons. So, uh, no, redesigned no. and submitted for review, and they want to tell the players that the idea of the quest is still very much alive. 
Thank uh, and he's also working on the player and farms, uh, looking for ideas for Raven's non-game jam project. Particularly interested in hearing about consumables that you repeatedly get from your farm, preferably non-combat. Uh, one thing I will say, when they were talking about these, uh, Mod Osborne and Mod Raven were actually having a race to see who could... Uh, who could do the the uh, get their quests out, and that's why uh, Osborne was actually working on two quests because he wanted to beat Raven. Raven said he was <laughs> going for quality over quantity. Ooh, <laughs> that was savage burn. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that Raven. was what he said, not me. I love Raven. Yeah, I heard that too. I was He's like, a cheeky bastard. He is. I, He's I'm an a, evil I bastard yeah. as well. Yes. Continue. Okay, on to the Unstable Skillings Dungeons again. Uh, this was the, they sort of showcased what they uh, had done. They actually made it into a dungeon now. Generation will be completely random from the resources to the layout. Completely random generated to the point that there is a very slim chance that you could get five resources inside. Uh, for example, there'll only be five magic trees and nothing else. But that is a very slim chance. You should have more than that as a general rule. Uh, it can generate herbs to pick. It has the Xenomai concept, giving random herbs based on your level. There will be a deposit box in the dungeon. Uh, they want to add the agility shortcuts. Uh, you can make the timer begin once you interact with something. No part of the risk of reward is, do I spend time trying to find my ideal resource, although we're going to add a peeking option. No, so people no peeking want to option. Say, okay, I want to run around and have a look and see what's there before I decide. No, your five minutes begins from when you go in there. But you can have a look and say, it'll say you know, herb patch, uh, you know, wood, wood patch, something like that. You don't even um, need to peek in. It won't show you where everything is. Yeah. Cheaters. You go in there, you get it, and that's what, exactly. <laughs> uh, hunter slash chinchompers will work differently than standard catching. Haven't had many ideas for the special spots. Luck of the Dwarves will improve the chance of receiving the maps uh, or maybe adding it to the Grace of the Elves. So it sounds like Grace of the Elves uh, is pretty much set to come in as well. Uh, they're looking to allow you to invite a friend, and Mage and I had a bit of a chuckle of this in chat because uh, we thought, yeah, just like we did on Uncharted Islands where I could invite Mage to come they and were, uh, get my resources. They were like I'm almost that walking back that idea live on the air. Like they were they were like, yeah, you can bring a friend, but like you might not want to because it's like might not be enough resources. And, yeah. Like, it's like, they're like, yeah, it's not going to happen. No one's going to invite a friend. Get out of no. here. <laughs> well, the thing is, I mean... It was actually impossible in the coding to be able to be done for uh, for Uncharted Island, so I don't understand how they could make it happen for this. Because they love to use the word impossible, when what they mean is they're, it's impossible for their current <laughs> talent to, to do that. Yeah. Or just it's going to take us way too long and we yeah. can't be bothered. It's impossible yeah. <laughs> due to the time constraints that our team has. Yeah, mm -hmm. like, you know, we could do... That was yeah. like one of my favorite things, that, like when I'd be like, I, I could fix this computer, it's going to take like two weeks of like three hours a day of work, but I'll fix it. And they're like, nah, no, no, just reinstall Windows. So that's 30 minutes versus <laughs> like 80 hours. Just reinstall <laughs> Windows. <laughs> like, but I want to fix yeah. it. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. <laughs> resources can deplete, but you'll have such an abundance you'll never feel like you've run out of resources, and it should be enough for both players. Um, that again, Liar. they were talking about inviting a friend, but again, you know, I, I, I honestly can't see them getting the friend option up and active anyway. But uh, they, again, as we said, these these sounded really good, and the showcase of it, uh, they look they looked really nice. It was yeah. a really interesting idea, and I thought, uh, yeah, I'd love to see this coming in to game sooner rather than later. Nice. All right. Uh, continuing on, uh, our, our patron saint, Mod Shawnee, has also uh, been showing off some more things on day two. Uh, tell us any enrage practice mode, regardless of your uh, current max enrage, will be an option. Uh, using any item on tell us in practice mode will skip the phase, and it will work for Virago too, and can be done for more bosses, but didn't want to do them all, uh, find out what players uh, people want, and what bosses people don't want. One thing I would ask him to do is uh, next, so I can just go in and practice Blood Phase if I yeah, want to. Yeah, I think uh, next would be a know. popular one. Yeah. Um, I love the practice mode on bosses, period. I love the idea. So, yeah, I do. T I think it's a great idea, especially on harder bosses like Telos and stuff where I know I stand yeah. no chance. <laughs> well, like you saw my... Uh, did you see my video series on it? <laughs> no, I haven't watched it. 
I've actually, no, no, that's okay because I mean they're long anyway. I can't watch combat in RuneScape. It makes nah, me anxious. They're, they're, they're thirty <laughs> odd, uh, thirty odd minutes each. But uh, basically, I take it from where I go in there. I, I watched a couple of videos, uh, and because I use Revolution, and yeah, everyone who puts videos up does it all in full manual. So yeah, they're killing it. They can hit everything to that precise tick. Whereas when you're using Revolution, it, it's it's not so easy. Yeah. Uh, and I just sort of run through learning where I get through. Well, phase one and two, no worries. But I was dying at three. Then I finally get through three and get to phase four up to the up to that final phase. And uh, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, I would love. I've got one and two down pat. I just want to start practicing at three. But you've still got to go through one and two to get to three, and then you know, all the way. So if they can do it, where I can just go to phase four and just practice phase four over and over. Uh, you know, same as the next. So I can just go to blood phase and just practice that over and over. Yeah. Uh, that was this, that's this pretty much really what like I wanted see. for. Um, yep, is so I can go and practice the phases that are killing me. Uh, that's right. Very, yeah. Thank you very much to Australian Swag for the follow. Appreciate that. But yeah, that's mainly what I wanted for, so I can practice the the boss modes that I know are going to kill me. Um, which I generally have certain problems with Araxi, and I would love to just practice the last phase of Araxi because that's the only part of Araxi that seems to be of any real challenge. Is is the end phase? So, like, mm -hmm. if I could just do that one over and over again, that would be nice. You, pro I don't know. You probably might even be able to do that with Araxi. I don't know. But point being is being able to just skip to the phase that you want to fight is a great idea. Um, yeah. so I don't think we really need to talk about the Alch alchemical onyxes again because nothing really changed since day one. Um, so probably not going to go through all no. the information again. And it's just basically it was basically every everyone liked the idea basically. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and same for construction contracts. Is uh, they maybe? Uh, I think they they updated the graphics a bit from day one. But as far as that yeah, goes, they, it's, ga they yeah. gave us some decent edges on the on the. Yeah, houses. you're right. You're right. I forgot. Right, right now it's just a slice of land, and you can actually see underground and everything. Like it's. Yeah, I hope. Yeah. It's like yeah. A terrarium. I think it was like a better option to uh, change the skyboxes and stuff like that, and maybe the ground probably because. Uh, that would work pretty cool if I wanted to make machinimas and stuff like that. This is the best place to do it. Yeah. That is pretty cool that they added some new ground. Just one there. other thing. They were looking for... that. They need to find a name for the easy teleporter. I was thinking the Pern Pactor. Mm. Yeah, name it after the person <laughs> who invented it. You know? <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I don't, uh, I don't care what they call it. Yeah. Just get it in as quick as possible. Is Pern Pactor also... Why couldn't also... they just call it the Omni Compactor oh, or something? Um, I've got the Omni Talisman. They probably will. They'll, mm, they'll do something like that eventually, I, I'm assuming. But yeah. Do not but, um, Google really... search Pern Pactor. Uh, if they call it Pern, oh. Pern, Pern Pactor, man, man. Why? Pern's ego would be so big, you'd think he'd run the show by now. Several anyway. pornographic <laughs> results. <laughs> anyway. Uh, we have more content uh, to go over for this show. Uh, we have, I think, two more posts here uh one is a design document specifically covering i've got nothing to change the sprinkle then you're fired see you later um no we, we have <laughs> no 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 the pern i i googled pern factor oh. and i got there nothing matches oh so. that's uh, maybe it's i should gonna, it's gonna register but we know what you now. look up maybe i should stop using duck duck go oh. <laughs> <laughs> well yeah i have that blocked here obviously because i don't want anything like that coming up on my good computer and giving it viruses fair <laughs> uh so let's see here um we have a design document here for drop tables and spring cleaner which we weren't sure if we were going to see a rework for spring cleaner on the release of uh the mining and smithing rework well it might actually be a possibility now as we have a a fairly well done design document in my opinion at least uh Pern, would you like to uh, start us off here with drop tables and spring cleaner and uh take the first two headlines and i'll take the next couple yep and why didn't that? I, oh, Jesus, because I clicked on the wrong link. Oh Idiot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've got the. I clicked on the mining <laughs> spring cleaner. I clicked on that again, not the full design doc. So, okay. These, this design is subject to play testing and feedback. If it sucks, we will change it. So, the drop tables and spring cleaner. There are two key types of drop items that need to that need replacing for the rework. These are smithable equipment, room plate bodies, iron swords, etc., and the smithing materials, ores and bars. These types will be addressed with two different solutions. So first up we have the drop smithable equipment. 
Uh, all dropped smithable equipment needs removing from the drop tables for the rework. This is partly to make sure that mining is the best source of smithing materials, but also because the level adjustments in the rework mean that old gear less is less valuable than it was, so the drops need to be changed to protect the value of the drop table. We will be introducing a new type of item, a salvage. Salvage has elk and disassembly properties similar to pre-rework drops, but cannot be used or turned into bars with the spring cleaner and cannot be equipped. Selvage doesn't stack and is tradable. There are 28 distinct kinds of selvage divided into seven tiers and four types. So the different tiers, the seven tiers are named after the seven materials. They are named this way to give them recognizable names associated with a particular tier of value. However, there is no other direct mechanical relationship between selvage and its associated metal. In particular, it can't be spring cleaned into that ore. The tier determines the elk value of the item and the amount of components it can yield from disassembly. Later, logical tiers, necronium, etc., can be added if we find need for the balancing and to fill out drop tables. So basically, bronze, high elks for 60 GP has eight components uh, and it has a 98.9% junk chance. Iron, elks for 240 GP, again, all these give eight, uh, eight components, uh, has an 89% junk chance. Steel, will elk for 48, uh, 480 GP, 78% junk chance. Mithril, 1,800 GP, 67% junk chance. Adamant is 6,000 GP for 56 base junk chance. Rune will go for 18,000 GP with a 45% junk chance. And Orichalcum is 60,000 GP and has a base junk chance of 34%. Moving on to types. The four types are bladed, spiky, blunt, and plated. These four types between them cover all the possible components that can currently be disassembled from smithable gear. So you have uh, you have bladed and then the type of metal salvage, spiky type of metal salvage, blunt type of metal salvage, and plated type of metal salvage. Uh, and then there's the often and rarely. Uh, often components will be base blade metallic for bladed. For spiky, you're looking at connector spiked and crafted. For blunt, you're looking at stav, het, and smooth. And for plated, you're looking at cover, plated, and deflecting. For rare, for bladed, you're looking at sharp, subtle, and dexterous. For spiky, you'll get swift, precise, and light. For blunt, you'll get stunning, direct, and strong. And for plated, you'll receive protected, heavy, and strong. Existing drop tables will be altered by swapping out equipment for salvage. The salvage will be of the same tier as the replaced items, such as rune items will be replaced with rune salvage. And the types will be the closest match to the item being replaced, such as plate bodies will be replaced with plated salvage. Salvage has a value approximately in the middle of the items in that category, and elks for some more than gloves but less than a plate body. To make the problem of fixing so many drop tables tractable, we replaced all items with the equivalent piece of salvage. This is a benefit for anything that used to use drop, uh, used to drop gloves and a slight nerf to anything that used to drop plate bodies. In the case of large numbers of drops being inconvenient but not wanting to go as far as noting the items, we can use higher tier salvage to add more value. If necessary, we can create even higher tiers of items. For example, old drop, rune longsword, new drop, one bladed rune salvage, old drop, bronze plate body, new drop, one plated bronze salvage, new dro- old drop rather, mithril mace, new drop, one blunt mithril salvage. Old drop, adamant square shield. New drop, one plated adamant salvage. Drop doors and bars. Metal ore and bars will be removed from drop tables and replaced with a new item, dragon scales. Dragon scales are the scales of metallic dragons. They are most commonly acquired by killing those same dragons, but they can be found in the hands of all sorts of creatures worldwide. Rampant deflation of the value of gold caused a, by a widespread use of alchemy has caused some monsters to start using dragon scales as a proxy currency. Now, we did have, uh, if I can just interrupt there, we did have a talk the other day in the, uh, in the polling system about sort of cutting back on the complexity of the currencies, and now we're adding another one. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, dragon scales come in a 
different types corresponding to the different ores, runite, mithril, etc. In their natural state, they are too interwoven with biological material to be useful, and no one ever found a way to smelt the material without destroying it. Enterprising humans found a surprisingly simple solution. Exposing dragon scales to freshly oxidized ore of the same type causes the scales to petrify into the same ore. This can only be done in the process of mining, so the dragon scales must be carried to mining sites in order to convert them. Strangely, dragon scales have been found. Strangely, dragon scales have been found that correspond to dragons that have never been verified to exist, such as luminite, orichalcum, and even necrite dragons. Whether these scales were created individually by the dragon kin or by some other experimenter, or whether the corresponding dragons simply haven't been found yet, is unknown. Da, da, da. <laughs> I like the <laughs> way it leaves the door open to three new dragons. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Well, we did have that. Again, that was another vote on the... Uh... People love their dragons. Yeah, it's that was fact. another vote on the poll. People like Double Dragon, but unfortunately RuneScape can't put it in. It's true. Dragon Dragons? Dragon Dragons. <laughs> yeah, Double Dragon, yeah, because of the arcade game. FX. Each type of Dragon Scale stacks with its own type. All Dragon scale dragon Scales are tradable. While mining, each time a player acquires a piece of ore, if the player has at least one of the corresponding type of dragon scale, one dragon scale is computed and an additional ore is acquired as the scale petrifies. This allows ore to be mined twice as quickly as long as the miner has enough dragon scales. Uh, note that no additional XP is awarded for the extra ore. If more than one ore is gained on one go, e.g. via the Varrock armor, still only one dragon scale is consumed and one additional ore gained. So you can actually get up to three at a time dragon scales will appear on to on drop tables replacing bars and ores on a one-for-one -one basis however because the metal tiers are being squashed we may replace ores and bars with higher tier replacements for example room bars might get replaced with bane or animica dragon scales or profitable drop tables i don't like that uh, that idea i mean we've said we're getting away from dropping the new things and while they're just saying I suppose I don't know. Yeah, it, it's, you still it's... have to go and mine to get them anyway. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, okay, I can sort of. It took I me could... a minute to kind of. Yeah, think about it too. I could probably get behind it because you still have to actually go and mine it anyway. But yeah. there's again, yeah, as this long is... as I don't get too high. This is exactly why we're talking about it, and I'm hoping mm. that this will open up a discussion in the Reddit thread. And we'll be covering this again on Friday. After we've yeah. had time to, you know, talk it over with people and let it all sink in, because this is obviously mm -hmm. it's, it's a design document for a reason. That probably is one of the points that is still kind of sticking out and might need some adjustment. Like I had this very similar yeah. feelings. Continue, or yeah. is it my turn? <laughs> Uh, metal dragons themselves will have guaranteed bar drops replaced with a number of dragon scales. So you're on to spring cleaner. All right, now talking about the spring cleaner. With the removal of smithable equipment from drop tables, the spring cleaner will lose a lot of its proposed value and use. Dismantle mode will be tweaked, and two new modes will be added, disassembly mode and elk mode. These new modes only work on salvage items. First up is dismantle mode. In rare cases where the smithable item remains on the drop tables, for example, we still may want to drop arrows or bolts, dismantle mode will not work on them and provide bars. Salvage items cannot be dismantled. Other non-smithing related items can continue to be dismantled for now. This may change in the future as we continue to look at the economy of other skills, but there are currently no plans to do so. Mm. Sorry, if I can just stop it. Yeah. That is great because I I mean I use mine all the time. So I thought I thought, you know, the salvage items breaking down and now I can just high elk it automatically. Fantastic. I just get gold straight there. If I am looking to get components for uh for invention, then great, you can do it that way. The fact that they're leaving everything else the same, so because I do do a lot of spiritual mages and yeah, you, know, you get a ton of battle stays yeah. and such from them. Uh it continues to be useful for that. So I was actually I was actually shocked that I saw this. I didn't think we'd seen anything about the spring cleaner until after mining and smithing come out, and then they'd work on something. That they've got something that looks pretty much fully fully done, and I can't really see any issues with it. Uh, I am really really excited now. 
Elk Mode is also uh, one of the newer features. Elk Mode is a new mode av available to the Spring Cleaner, which has been upgraded to at least 3,000. In Elk Mode, any salvage that the Spring Cleaner activates on is automatically elked and converted into coins to what it would have high elked for. No runes are consumed, and no magic XP is awarded. One charge of the Spring Cleaner is used each time this happens. If a Golden Touch Sigil is active, this takes priority, and no charges are consumed. Elk mode only works on salvageable items. Disassembly mode. Disassembly mode is another new mode to spring cleaners, which has been upgraded to at least 5,000. In disassembly mode, any salvage that the spring cleaner activates on is automatically disassembled. This does not cost any charges from the spring cleaner to do. Disassembly mode only works on salvaged items. So, I honestly think like 90% of this is really well fitted. Uh, retrofit for the spring cleaner. Like, yeah, I, very well done. Yeah. And the fact that this assembly doesn't use any charges now means that uh, all the sort of mithril, steel, bronze, etc., that I just leave on the ground, mm, can I'm be... going to set all those to disassemble now. Yeah. Have elk on all the higher stuff. Um, and if we go up there, so let's have a look. Uh, spring cleaner is almost so better. Eddie, Addy 6,000 coins. So, yeah, so basically, Addy upwards, you'd high elk. Yep. And Mithril downwards, uh, you would uh, just have disassemble. Disassemble doesn't cost you anything, so it's going to stop me leaving all that junk on the ground anyway. Uh, so I, I, I actually really, really like it. I think it actually looks even better than the, the, current, uh, <laughs> the, the, the current one. Yeah, I mean, this almost seems like it has value added almost, right? Like, this is mm. seems kind of better. So... Any other thoughts on the spring cleaner or the drop tables? I'm very impressed with how this is all coming together. Yep. I cool. really, well, really I love look it. look forward to testing it out. Me too. Uh, and we should be seeing another beta in the next month or so, from my understanding. Uh, so hopefully next one or two months we'll see another beta of uh, the Mining and Smithing Rewind. Yeah. So cool. I'm, 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 see, I'm feeling like we're actually going to see this in 2018. It's a possibility. <coughs> all right, here. We have we, we have, do get a we do get another beta coming up in the morning and spending. We're definitely gonna have to live stream it for sure. Yeah, if uh if it's more complete and useful than the last one, then heck yeah. Uh so again, we're gonna close the show out here with um a less than uh serious post here, but the response from Mod Jack is pretty great. <laughs> Slap down. So uh, again, I gave I gave Mod Jack Reddit gold for this because like I was just so impressed with his ability to stand his ground. Uh, so let's see here. Uh, this post is by Garcia, who says, "Since we've been getting a lot of opinion polls recently, Jagex should consider an in-game poll for whether we actually want mining and smithing to be reworked, with it needing seventy-five percent to pass." <laughs> The majority of people aren't interested in the skills being reworked, possibly just a representation of my peers, but all they want was for the levels to mine ore and smith armor to be modified to the appropriate levels of armors and defense levels, such as it's currently 85 mining to mine rune ore and 99 smithing to make a rune plate body and 50 defense to wear it. A simple fix for this would be to have replicated dungeoneering. Possible poll options, and I'm not going to waste my time here, but they could still implement the new mining and smithing with higher tier ores uh, that they plan to release just for some diversity. This uh, would also make up for how much time has been invested into it so it doesn't completely go to waste. A lot of time is going into an update that most people just don't care about and don't want. Again, speak for yourself. <coughs> it's difficult to understand the logic behind them polling such minor things for our opinions, but for such a big thing to change the game, they don't want to know whether or not we actually want it. And, again, this was polled multiple times. Like, it was actually polled, like, literally multiple times because there was kind of a scandal the first time around. But, uh, point being is, A, check your facts, because there was polls for this. You, you're, you're, you're coming from a place of complete ignorance. And, B, people voted for what we're getting so shut up anyway mod jack brilliantly comes in here with a very passionate response and says no support i assume your peers are mostly pvmers this has always been a contentious issue as it as it's a pvm versus skiller update we've consistently gotten feedback from skillers that this is the most important update ever bar probably the bank rework, but PVMers complaining that it isn't a complete waste of time and going to destroy the game. 
This is a classic example of something that polls don't really work for. It's called the tyranny of the majority. Let's assume hypothetically that the RuneScape player base consists of 60% committed PVMers who never skill and 40% committed skillers who never do slayer or bossing. If we OS style updates to this community, every PVM update would pass and every skiller update would fail. <coughs> Excuse me. That would make 100% of the updates PVM focused, when actually if you wanted to do things fairly, only 60% of the updates should be PVM focused. The simple facts are that QBD had terribly designed rewards, thanks to a developer who is no longer with us, and since, the P and since then, PVM has been in an escalating arms race of profitability to justify its existence. Now PVM stands to uh, totally supreme within the RuneScape economy, being not only the best source of gold, but the best direct source of almost all gathered items as well. What various surveys and polls have shown us over and over again is that a significant proportion of the player base, we don't know whether it's actually a majority because of the limitation of how polling works, but it's a significant enough portion, uh, proportion that we need to take notice, want us to do something about this. So we are. Subsequent surveys and polls have also repeatedly demonstrated how much people care about this update. Again, second to the bank rework. To my memory, this is the third most significant update in modern RuneScape history after Return of Free Trade and Elf City. Nothing else has generated even a fraction of the hype. Even if a clear majority, say 60% of players, didn't want the update, that wouldn't indicate that this was the wrong move for the game. It would just demonstrate what we, what we already know, which is that PVMers would prefer to have all the rewards and skillers to get little by comparison. <laughs> if you check the recent thread about drop tables, you'll find players complaining to me that Slayer is worthless now due to the slight reduction in elk value of some drops, and you'll also find other players complaining to me that I don't get it because we left something profitable on drop tables for PVMers to make money from. I have to continually and actively defend PVMers in discussions of this update because a lot of skillers don't understand why we wouldn't just rip off the band-aid and cripple PVM profitability. Again, what we've said time and time again is, you know, this is a balancing act. It's not about destroying PVM in the process. It's about, it's a give and take. You know, PVM, yes, is going to have some things devalued. But at the same time, we're not looking to wreck or ruin PVM's ability to profit because there is real skill behind PVM. It's just about making sure that it's not the only way in the game to earn a living. Just like in real life, you know, there are multiple ways you can go about earning your same lifestyle. Like, you know, there's multiple ways to pay for a lifestyle. And it's not like, oh, well, if you want to do this, there's only one thing you can go out and do if you want to, you know basically live a certain lifestyle well in runescape it pretty much is uh you know if you want to live that you know elite lifestyle you either are really good at pvm and there's really no other option for you unless you want to spend 20 hours a day grinding out minimum gold and maybe in a year you'll have enough money to do something with but like you know that's that's kind of what i face here is as a skiller um you know getting to 120 smithing you know the way i'm doing it is considered extremely inefficient which is training the skill and i'm you know i'm using tra a lot of, i'm using treasure hunter boosts and all that stuff just to make it even profitable without treasure hunter this would not even be profitable for me <coughs> and a lot of skills are like that and, and and it's not fair i mean people argue about the afk nature of this but i have to pay attention enough so every 15 seconds if i want to maintain efficiency every 15 seconds i have to pay attention to the game client that's Annoying for a lot of people. I had a friend message me the other day who was uh, fletching and saying, fletching is totally not AFK. Every 28 seconds, I have to do something. That's not AFK. And I'm like, exactly. yeah, I know. So what? Mm. <laughs> mm. Like, yeah, skillers have to do things too. Yes, they aren't as crazy right now as PVM are, but we, there, there's potential. We, we've talked about a lot of stuff on the show today that offers a lot of hope and potential for skilling. And I couldn't be happier. And this post is just a culmination of how I feel about 2018. I am just, I'm just swelling with excitement. Take that however That's you it. will. And I mean, what we just, what they just described in the, uh, the spring cleaner rework. I mean, salvage. That is a great byproduct to have to replace all those drops that we used to have. That is going to leave it still good for the skiller. 
but it's not going to affect the PVMer that much. Yes, they'll take a little bit of a hit because you know you're not <coughs> going to get your what is it, you know, 35k elk for your rune two handers now, but you're you're also not going to be stuck getting you know 3,000 GP for for a set of gloves. You've got that good middle ground of you know 16,000 or 18,000 GP, whatever it was. I mean, mm. I think they have How really... How many glove drops they leave? <laughs> exactly right. I mean, gloves were like... Especially if you go to uh, somewhere like Gargoyles. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. what I was thinking. Gloves, gloves and, and boots, boots and gloves and boots and gloves and boots. <laughs> and helms. Yeah. And helms that are, that are, that are you know, worthless. So they're going to be... They're actually going to make you more money there. So that's going to bring... Gar- yes, you know, your, your Dark Beasts and your... Um, Abyssal demons will probably go down, you well, know, then. 10, 12 percent. But things like gargoyles and that, they're going to lift ten or fifteen percent. Mm. So again, this is yeah, what averages is. do. This is literally what exactly averaging right. does. Is it? It just That's cuts right. the ends off of both ends. And, exactly. And what he said there. I mean, where where you see you no know, sixty percent, um, you know, PVMers and and forty percent skills. Well, they actually had a poll not so long ago on their front page. Fifty five percent of players said that they had never PVM'd. That's crazy. So, you know, I'm sorry. Yes, if you hang around with PVMers, they're all going to whinge. If you hang around with just skillers, they're all going to whinge and say, you know, this, that, and the other. But you know, this is bringing a fair balance. We have seen gold just go up and up and up and up uh, exponentially over the last few years because of every time they bring out a boss remember when they released uh, <coughs> the, the the gemstone dragons last year everyone was whinging because you know oh geez you're only you know, you're only making a million an hour it's not worth it rah 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 yeah a million an hour it's three years ago was fantastic for a slayer creature oh yeah but sure. because they've just had to keep increasing and increasing and increasing because people just expect that every time, yeah, it's just it, it's just killing it. So uh, good I on you, my Jack. Nose, I love face nose gemstone dragons, don't you? <laughs> oh, yeah, they're they're, Never they're fall great. Actually, I always I always uh, take down uh, one of these scrimshaws, uh, the sacrifice. So you just get all the extra XP and no drops. They're fantastic. Yeah, that's a good that's a good idea actually. I should think mm. about doing it that way. Yeah. Just don't take the one of aggression. You don't want to be just absolutely wrecked in there. Yep. But uh, <laughs> no, I, I, big pat on the back for uh for Mod Jack for for that and a yeah. uh, very well written post and such and I'm just looking down and yeah, again there are a lot of people yeah, con- complaining, but uh there's a lot of people backing him up too, so that indeed. is very, very good. Indeed, indeed. I, I think we should ch- test out yeah, the mining and smithing uh, beta when the next one comes out, instead of just condemning it before it's even out. Who's condemning it? Oh, you know, these people. There are people who are always going to condemn it no matter what. That's the problem. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yep. So. Yeah, just just test, test it out before you just, you know, crap on it. You might and like again, it. That's right. It was again. As has always been shown with Jagex, if there is a problem, if something's underpowered or overpowered, they are quick to respond and they fix it for us. It's not like, okay, we have to sit with it like this for 12 months before we get a fix. They'll take feedback and if they need a little bit of a buff here, a little bit of a nerf there, they'll do that very quickly. I mean, you know, you've got to give it to these mods. They are fantastic at doing that type of thing. Some of them are, at least. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> well, let's see. And while we are at it, a big, uh, yeah, big pat on the back to all the mods who did work on uh, on Game Jam over the weekend. That was all unpaid work. Uh, in case people didn't know that, they volunteered their time for all those hours getting that done for us. Yeah. You know, um, that was that was done out of the love of the game and you know the love of the community that they did that for. So, just always keep that in mind too when uh, you know when you're talking about those type of things indeed those are that's that's real passion right there like just remember that that's these right. are the pe- people yeah. that, for the second year in a row which they've done yeah. the uh, game change, mm. and twice it's been a real success i really enjoy it i'm sure there are plenty of people who work at runescape and it's just a job but remember that there are people who work at runescape and it's their passion so that's right oh, yeah. who cool. was it who was the drunk who was the one working with the, the drunk one what yeah one of them said, oh, I had a hangover yesterday. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Mod I think, Ryan? Was that Arena? Oh, 
Uh, uh, Mud Ryan. Uh, I think it was Mud Ryan. It uh, might have uh, been Raider. He's going, oh, yeah, I, I, I had it. <laughs> yeah. I was working so nothing on a, got a done. hangover yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> and I just cracked uh, up laugh, and I thought, well, good on you. Yeah, honesty. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's something you can't be honest about at most jobs with, right? And I guess if you're volunteering, yeah, yeah, they yeah. can't fault you for it. Well, that's it. It's volunteer. Yeah, they volunteer their time. And, you know, as I said, good on you guys for getting out there and doing it. And a big, big thank you because, you know, you, you saw a lot of nasty comments in, in chat. And uh, don't yeah, take those to do. heart because I know. That's because why I there's a lot that of that chat off, man, because I can't yeah. deal with those idiots. Oh, that bloody you know exclamation point uh claim loot what oh they should do God. is anyone who does that kick them straight or not, not kick i them got out, muted mute for them. saying <laughs> don't <laughs> say it exactly <laughs> <laughs> yeah mute those people and anyone who types that in should not get that loot box yeah if yeah, you type this in them. you should yeah, lose you, you should lose you all lose levels box. you lose all yep, levels exactly. you gained that day Yep, exactly right. <laughs> you rolled back for being dumb. Yeah, that annoy that annoys me to no end. Just watching it, oh. just constantly. They don't need to You're do it. It even read. says there. It even says yeah. on the freaking main part of the screen. Know. You don't need to bloody type it, but they still do because they're, they're blind memeing. and stupid. They're not, no, they're just being dumbass memers. They're they being they think it's funny. Yeah, they're just being dicks. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, and I mean, there's some good questions that we sort of fly up the page because you don't get to see them because you know dickheads doing things like that. So anyway. yeah, unfortunate. That's it. <laughs> so yeah, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back on Friday for our regular edition of RuneScape Weekly. We got plenty more content to cover. Uh, in the meantime, though, we have uh, plenty of places you can join us. We have a Discord available for you if you'd like. Discord.runeweek.com is the Discord link for you there. That's a short link. Uh, we also have plenty of social media opportunities for you as well. we got a Facebook page, uh, facebook.com slash rsweekly. And we got a Twitter for you as well. We are at rsweekly over on Twitter. Uh, you can also rate us and review us in iTunes or whatever podcast aggregator you use to obtain the show if you are using one. Make sure you rate us and review us in said podcast aggregator, such as Stitcher or iTunes. Or, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like the video. If you're follow watching on Twitch, don't forget to follow us so you, and so you know when we go live again. And, of course, if you want to check us out in-game, we have a clan chat for you. That's clan chat kill skill and chill. Kill skilled letter and chill or runescape.club. If you toss that into your web browser, you can check out our Rune Clan rankings. You want to check out my progress, you can enter runescape.expert into your browser. And you can follow along with my gains. Or if you want to check out our archives on our YouTube channel, you could do that as well at runescape.video. Uh, and if you want to check out our podcasts, uh, you could check them out at runescape.today. And uh, again, I want to make a big special thanks to our top Patreon supporters, including David, Ephistix, and Sudwood. Thank you for continuing to support the show, and not only to our top patrons, but all of our patrons. Thank you so much for continuing to support the show. Don't forget we have those new vanity URLs on offer if you're interested, and the Patreon pre-show is about to go up. If you missed any portion of this show and you want to catch it, it's going to go live again as a rerun on Twitch, or you'll be able to catch it on YouTube after the fact. So that's a thing as well, and it will be up on podcast shortly after as well. So thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed this episode of RuneScape Weekly. Until next time, happy scaping.